right. will happen. All right, guys, we are live. Oh, hi now. Uh, my name is Richard Tip. Y'all can call me Dick. Um, we got a uh, fun-filled uh, uh, show for you guys tonight. We got some special guests. We got some not so special guests. <clears throat> Brian. Um, let's uh. Of course, I don't introduce myself, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the ball to daggone white dirt. Hit it, white. Hey, hit what? Say your damn name. Oh, my bad. <laughs> 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 like, who do I have to hit? Um, what's up, guys? Welcome to Opcom. I'm White Derp uh, from High Capacity TV, and um, thank you all for joining us. And we also have along with us Tim from Trifecta Tactical. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> that's me. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and eat as much of this Halloween candy in the hours as possible. And hopefully by the end of the show, it'll be empty. <laughs> Good luck. It's going to have a cavity. <laughs> Can you eat all of it? If you, dude, that means by the end of the chat, he's going to be wired as hell. Yeah, all jacked all up. Hey, hey. Hey, cavity. You call it a tactical storage spot. You can like store, you can store darts in there and stuff, and spit them at people. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna assume that Tim was gonna pass it to Spiro. Um, can y'all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh. Um, so, um, <laughs> I'm Spiro Nixon uh, with Minuteman Munitions here. Woo! Woo! Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, you should go check it out. We're busy selling tons of ammo, so why not get in on the action and get some awesome ammo? Uh, that's all I gotta say. So I'm gonna pass it on to that smelly creature known as Musty. What's up, guys? I'm Musty Yeti. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, Musty Yeti's Tactical <coughs> HQ. Do a lot of unboxings, very few shooting videos. Um, yeah, you guys should check me out. You're on my channel now. Um, I'll pass it on to Red. Hey guys, uh, this is Brett Gadoff from uh, uh, Frontline Defense. Uh, this is our first night on here, so we appreciate the invite and I uh, look forward to it. I'll pass it on to uh, Stefan. Hey guys, uh, again, appreciate you guys having us down. Um, Stefan with Frontline Defense, we're out of Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, we do defensive uh, firearms courses similar to what Solo offers. We do uh, uh, pistol and carbine courses. So. Um, we have uh, a lot of background in that, and uh, as well as bug out medical bags, guns, holsters, gear. We're gear junkies ourselves, so hopefully we uh, are able to give a lot of input on things and give you some ideas as far as things you guys can add to your kit or things that uh, you might not have. So, good deal. Um, last but I'm guessing not least, um, again. <laughs> Uh, solo from, from Solo Defense Training Group here in North Carolina. Um, been talking to the guys over at Frontline uh, past year or two. Um, watched a lot of their videos and, and uh, we talk about training quite a bit. And we thought it'd be a really uh, awesome idea to have them on um, just to share some another point of view on some of the topics that we cover. Um, so hope everybody enjoys the show tonight. Yeah, um, we. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit in depth tonight about training. Um, we lightly touch on it throughout episodes. We tell you you should do it. We tell you da da da. We recommend this. We recommend that. But we've never really had a topic where we where, that's been centralized on training. So we're going to get to that a little bit later on. That's why we've got Brett and Steph, and so uh, they're going to be able to provide some really good insight. Um, but we don't want to lose track of what we normally do. Um, so I know. Uh, Richard had some curious information, uh, at least some stuff that we may or may not have heard about. Uh, he wanted to talk about real quick. Um, <clears throat> did you guys hear about the um the, the shooting at the mall in uh New Jersey? Was it? Yeah, but wasn't it just? Didn't the kid go in and like wasn't he on drugs or something and just go in and kill himself <laughs> pretty much? Well, he he walked in. And apparently he yelled out some like hold on, hold on, and then shot like into the air and then Wait, shot what did he himself. what did he yell out? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, sounds my, like, my, my head sounds head like head out. He sounds probably, like Timmy from uh, South Park. <laughs> 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 Suicide fight! 
Dude, <laughs> man, the South Park game for N64 was the best game ever made, ever. They had a turkey so, gun. Just, anyway. just so I can be clear, some kid walks into a mall, opens fire, but doesn't hit or kill anybody? <sighs> I don't believe. I don't even think his intentions were to hurt anybody. I think he just wanted everybody to poop themselves. And then turns the gun on himself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, right. I didn't hear. Did he actually fire shots besides the one killing himself, or did he just kind of show the gun and stuff? He he did fire shots. Oh, he did. Okay. Yes. Um, well, but you you don't really hear a whole lot about it because he didn't kill anybody else. Well, there you go. Was yeah, it another AR-15 thing? He has one of them AR-15 shotguns with a 500 round magazine. 500 round clip. 500 round clip. Yes, clip. Oh, oh, Assault pardon clip. me for using the right language. I'm sorry, damn. <laughs> Tag on, man. I'm sorry. Oops. What I was saying is I know it's not on the news because my wife's kind of an anti-gunner. I mean, she's not anti-gunner. She she's kind of impartial. Either way. Oh, she married the wrong mother. I know. <laughs> uh, so if she hasn't mentioned it to me yet, that means it's not really on the news. And like we were saying, we find it shocking that because somebody wasn't killed besides the shooter, um, it's not media worthy, and it's it's just so pathetic. Uh, a fifteen year old girl that gets bullied on Facebook commits suicide, and it goes everybody knows about it. But some guy who shoots only himself in a mall, nobody nobody cares. Yeah, I still don't get that. I don't. I don't mm, that's a whole nother subject, though. I mean, Whatever. I understand that. Whatever progresses their agenda is pretty much what it comes down to. There you yeah, have absolutely. It. So since this couldn't be used as uh, potential um, ammunition, cannon fodder. Can't, well, it's exactly it's not even cannon fodder. It's 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 not even getting used. It's oh, there's a shooting and all this crazy stuff. You need to be scared. Wait a minute. Only Wait. one guy was hurt, and it was the. Fucking, yeah. it was the guy with the gun. So, what was the death toll for yeah. the shooting at, at the airport? Uh, was there? I, I don't think it, the one person. There was a one person died. Or was anybody, did anybody die? Yeah, I thought one person died, and maybe like six or seven others injured. Maybe. I'm gonna. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with the airport t uh, topic later. Uh, I'm, well, I'm anxious well, to jump now, on now the uh, thousand standing around ones. They're uh, who is it? They're what are the unions? The unions like we need to arm them. Yeah, yep. I barely trust officers with guns. <laughs> we definitely don't need to arm these people. <laughs> Dot TSA. Yeah, seven That's injures. Right yeah, seven injures, <laughs> one dead. Yep. Um, um, Beat be me to it. Yeah. Spiro, Spiro meant to say he barely trusts most officers with guns. Mm, Not every officer. I don't know. Sometimes I don't trust myself. I guess that's <laughs> how, how you have to True. be. Um, <laughs> you need to train more. I'm working on that. Well, well. At, at least at, the biggest thing is to always be safe, and that saves us from when we don't trust ourselves because at least we can be safe all the time and try to always try to be safe to some point. <laughs> well, not but a few weeks ago, Solo had. Sol had one of my favorite oh. quotes ever. He goes, "Even the dumbest person can't shoot somebody with an unloaded gun." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can, I mean, I just don't understand it. Like, we've got more than one gun safety rule out there. We try to follow all of them to ensure our safety, but we have the other ones that are in place as fail safes. Like, I mean, how bad does it have to be? So, I mean, well, it's just. You follow the rules and you should be good, but there's always exceptions. Be safe. Hey, Brian's joining us. Yay. Um. <laughs> is he? Oh, and yeah. tonight's episode of Opcom is brought to you by Pumpkin Beer. This Pumpkin Beer. Southern <laughs> Tears Pumpkin. This stuff is the heat. So when you guys are talking about gun safety, do y'all mean something like that? Because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how that'd do any damn good, really. Well, you, you got to put it over the guns. Yeah, my MMP won't get no viruses. Hey, Make you sure put it over the trigger, because that's the safety part. Oh, yeah. but this um, is the part that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Will you put that on camera again, please? <laughs> and and speak while doing so. Hi now, look at it out there. So I'll say that. I mean, I mean, this is the part that is similar to your 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 uh, your uh, um, I don't even want to call my, your Richard and uh, 
mean, why wouldn't this not be the dangerous end? Here we are speaking <laughs> about firearm safety, and he's safety, sticking his finger and you're in a freaking, barrel. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> Just, I, I, I thought I had yeah. a knee. I don't even know what I'm talking about no more. What were y'all saying? Sorry. You hadn't even broke out the moonshine the gun yet. Down, then. Oh, yeah. the, the moonshine is uh, it's about to get snapped into. I'm going to snap into some moonshine. Is your safe gun loaded? <laughs> there um, we go. Now what's, what's rule number one of, of gun safety? Don't touch it. Point it at things you like to destroy. What's, what, somebody tell me what rule number one of firearm safety is. Finger off the trigger. Oh, no. All guns are loaded always. All right, so should you be putting your finger in the barrel of a loaded gun? See, That's I, how I, I sleep. I had already cleared it like four times. I'm surprised you guys didn't hear it. I did like that. No, no, no. I'm just, I was just making a joke based off of what our rules were supposed to be. Guys, I'm not even going to lie. My gun is real slippery right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move What's on it? from the, the safety faux pas. Ribbed for the bad guy's pleasure. Oh, God. Uh, uh, this week on Opcom. <laughs> That's the only place you'll ever see a condom on a gun. Welcome to Opcom. You all just wandered into the craziest part of YouTube, and I apologize, but welcome. And some, Brian, liberal is, some liberal is sitting there going, what did I just fall into? <laughs> Firearm Safety 101. I did lose don't, a bullet. Don't point it at anything you're not willing to destroy. <laughs> yeah. Index finger. Brian, hey, buddy, welcome. Yeah, I finally figured out Google, Google Hangout likes to change their shit around every week. You know? Every yes, week, yep. Yep. So yes, if we is. are a little effed up, guys, we apologize, but the, the Google, the Google, they every week it's something different, and we have to relearn it, and we have to do it pretty fast. So um, the Google does what it wants to do. So since we're you know on firearms safety, um, how often? And this this is mainly for Brett, Steph, and Solo. When you guys are, are doing a class. I know firearm safety is the most important thing, and it's the first thing talked about. How much time do you guys typically spend on that? How often do people have questions during a firearm safety brief? Um, is, is that... Our, oh, wait, what question is asked? Do people actually... Like, oh, what do you mean about the muzzle or the barrel? I mean, what? Well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a quick rundown as far as how our, our course normally goes. Um, when everybody gets to class... Everybody signs a waiver, um, so that's the first thing they do the second they walk in the door. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, everybody signs a waiver. Um, we do about 45 minutes to an hour of actual classwork before anything starts, so we just double-check everybody's guns are unloaded, and then um, we take about, I don't know, two minutes just to go through safety, our personal rules on the course, um, what we expect from everybody, and then we move straight into class. So, and so I've, I've been to yours before. They don't seem too different than that. Right, right. We don't do quite as much. We don't, we don't do any quote, unquote, classroom time. Um, but the first thing we do is a, a medical brief. Um, we cover where we are. Um, Designate somebody, to call, you know, 911 in case of a negligent discharge or, or otherwise. What and happens if that person is the one that gets shot? Then we have secondaries. I've got myself um, as well as John and Jamar both in the range usually. So there's usually at least two range officers as well as at least one or two instructors uh, on the line at all times. But... Um, Normally, I make everybody go through. We go through them in order, the safety, firearm safety rules in order, um, and I like to have people, I kind of ask people what they are to get them thinking about it rather than just me spouting off of the yep. mouth yep. Uh, first five minutes of the morning because nobody's listening. So you have to actually engage them in the conversation um, to really get it through their heads what, what we're talking about and the seriousness of it. Um, and then we talk a little bit about mindset. Um, you know, what your foreground and background is today is the range before you get to the target and after you get to the target. You know, the foreground and background tomorrow could be a crowded mall with your kid in the front and your wife behind it at the register uh, behind the bad guy. So, you know, just I try to 
sober people up a little bit when they come onto the range. Uh, we we enjoy it, you know, shooting. We and we have a good time, but the seriousness needs to need to be there when it comes to firearm safety. So I try to stress the mindset aspect. I have people thinking about that as they're, as they're training. Well, then you're screwed because you invited Dick Tip to a firearms that is, course. That is true. We'll change we, him yet. That's, that's, that's a good way. That's a good way Listen, of approaching now. it because I know I've never really thought about you know approaching the students and asking them to kind of you know list what they think the safety rules are and um, yeah. you know our 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 foreground background and everything's always the same. It's you know we we teach in the um, at a shooting range inside and everything. So, but it's a good way of kind of putting it, uh, how you said, Aaron, um, you know, just saying different scenarios, how today is this and tomorrow could be something else. So, yep. The one thing that we do di a little bit differently that we brief in the beginning of class is um, if, if somebody accidentally fires around um, and somebody's hit, whether that's them or somebody else in the class, um, we don't call 911 right away. Um, what we do is we will, depending on where the round hits, we will treat the wound right then and there, and then we move out to the car, even if we have to carry the person, and we go straight to the hospital. Um, the time it takes us to get to the hospital from the places where we typically shoot at, um, it's faster to drag the person, throw the person, or assist the person out to the car and get them to the hospital than it would be for an ambulance to get there. Not to mention, um, you know, we're trained in medical, so uh, to the extent that somebody's shot in the head or something like that, um, you know, we, we, we're going to treat everything on site and then transport them to the hospital. So that's, we do debrief that in the beginning of class, just to let everybody know. That's, so. And that's interesting. Um, now, I don't know how many instructors will do it that way. Um, and if you've got the proper training, I, I kind of don't see a problem with it. Some viewers might go, what the hell? Oh, my God, you don't call 911. Um, so playing devil's advocate, um, right. do you have somebody designated to call? Like you know, everybody that's trained can treat the person, but you have somebody in the background calling 911 saying, you know, we're already on the way. Um, we're just letting you know what happened kind of thing. Or do you Well, just... it's one of those things like ima imagine if you're shot, like imagine if if one of our students got shot in the thigh or imagine one of them shot somebody in the stomach or something like that. Um, you know, they can bleed out in a matter of a minute and a half, you know, um, if they're, sh you know, if they're shot in the right spot, it just really depends. But um, I can, if they get shot in the leg, I mean, I can slap a tourniquet on, you know, I can do a lot of things in the meantime while we're in the vehicle driving to the hospital. Right. So um, rather than sitting there and going, oh, fuck, dude, this is really right. bad, and just waiting, you know, because that ambulance could be four minutes around the corner or they could be ten minutes around the corner, and okay. a lot can go on between then. And most of the places that we shoot at, unless they're one of the outdoor places we train at, um, a hospital, <laughs> if we're driving fast, is within five minutes of us. So... Yeah. And Deep still... Up. Go ahead, Solo. I was going to say, do you guys – another thing that we talk about during the medical brief is we actually – the first thing I ask people, and you can ask uh, why is um, – I ask them who who here – we identify who has med kits and where they are. Um, and I love <laughs> jumping down people's throats whenever they don't have them. Um, we actually ended the, the uh, last opcom on Mindset, which was always having an IFAC with you. Um, so the first thing I ask people is, is who, who has IFAX, where are they, do you know how to use them? Um, and another good thing about where we train at is it's actually in our uh, medical instructor's backyard, and he and his wife are both EMTs, so I'm, you know, it makes me feel a little bit more at ease, especially with Dick coming next week. <laughs> I'm um, <a> dog. <laughs> man. I, sorry, I, even, sorry. I even got you a gift, man, and you're going to be saying some shit like that? Damn. Damn. Hey, not to interrupt anybody, but has anybody been following this Richard Incognito story? No. The story ain't even the good part. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's the good and, part. Man. And then he froze. We'll continue yep. until he unfreezes. No, we'll continue anyway. I'm um, back. Sorry. What happened? Still... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have... Good. We don't have anyone in our classes that carries IFX. They're like one one out of <laughs> one out of uh, one out of twelve people that come through our course has an IFX on them. That's a good wow. teaching moment. That's a great Absolutely. teaching moment. 
And the best part is when we go to gun shows and we're, you know, we, we try to sell some from one of our other sponsors and stuff and, you know, $50 IFAC kit that has just about everything in it. Everybody's like, no, nah, I don't see a need for it and, and stuff like that. It's yeah, just, they, just, they, just wait. They, they seem to be able to find any and every excuse in the book um, as far as why they don't need an IFAC. And I, I've came to a conclusion that um, people that people that love guns and are gear junkies like most of us in this room, we like buying guns and toys and flashlights and knives and shit that's too expensive and, and we like to show it off. Um, and IFAX just happen to be one of those things that they're not really cool. So, you know... Um, Until you need it. People go out and spend $1,000 on a 1911 and then $25 on the holster, but then they won't buy a, you know, a $50 IFAC or something like that. So, you know, it's just people's priorities are different than ours. And, well, um, for, the, for the viewers, um, uh, we were in a previous chat that was unaired. You showed a little $20 IFAC from a company. Um, yeah. Somebody that's not willing to part with 200 bucks for a Dark Angel or even 50 bucks for a general IFAC, what information yeah. could you provide them from, from what you were telling us earlier? There, there's two kits. There's two kits that we recommend out on the market. Um, obviously, I have a Dark Angel medical kit. Um, it, they're awesome kits, but they're they're so damn expensive. Um, uh, we one of our sponsors is Gear Zone Tactical. If you guys haven't checked them out before, um, I suggest you check them out. They have. Um, it's a female owner. She has amazing pricing on everything firearm related. It's GearZoneTactical.com, and uh, she has probably one of the the best IFACs that you can get for the money online. It's called the Enhanced IFAC One, and um, it's forty eight dollars ninety nine cents. Um, it comes in a Molly Molly pack. Uh, Stefan, do you have one, or you want me to go grab it real quick? No, I, I mean, I don't have one, but I, I'll, I'll have to include a link. Um, I can tell you guys what's in it, and then I'll give you the rundown, and then you can kind of decide if you like it or not. So there's two Everybody different kits. So there's, there's the Enhanced IFAC 1, which comes in a Molly bag that is also, you can put it as a drop leg, or you can mount it to a plate carrier or a bag. And it has... Um, TK4 tourniquet, Israeli bandage, compressed gauze, medical tape, um, an MPA, lube for the MPA. Comes with shears, gloves, gauze. I mean, it comes with everything in that kit. It's $48.99. If you now, could send that link to Solo, um, we could we could share it for everybody who wants it. Just uh, do that over Facebook, and then he'll he'll get it out to us. Yeah, um, I'll send it. To, I'll send it just to him in right case. Now. Um, I'll, I'll have it over right now. The other kit, the other kit that we are we are really pushing and trying to get people to buy is, and, and this isn't a kit that I'm making any money off of. It's just I personally use a bunch of them. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but this is called the Wetsu Survival Kit, or I'm sorry, no, it's called the Wetsu Trauma Kit, and uh, it's 20 bucks. And uh, it's vacuum sealed in a food saver pack, and it has literally everything in it that you need. Um, it's got, well, it, I'm sorry, it's got the bare necessities in there to stop something that were to happen really bad. Uh, it comes with a TK4 tourniquet, compressed gauze, an H bandage, the big one, not the thin one. It also comes with duct tape, gloves, and clothespins. Um, so it has everything to clear, everything to take care of uh, critical blood loss or obstructed airway. Um, tension pneumothorax is, is one thing that it's not going to cover. Um, so uh, if the clothespins are for clothespinning your tongue to your, your bottom lip, um, if the patient all of a sudden passes out or goes unconscious, um, a lot of people will be transported to the hospital and they haven't realized that their tongue rolled in the back of their throat. And they they, saw on their tongue. they, didn't, they didn't, Yeah, they didn't die from the actual gunshot wound. So clothespins is the cheap version um, of having a really compact uh, way of taking care of an obstructed airway versus using an MPA, which is the, as you guys all know, is you know a little trumpet with the tube that goes in everybody's nose. Right. So, um, like I said, it has compression bandage, your gauze, your tourniquet, duct tape, um, clothespins, and then gloves. And um, if you could also sure toss that, that link over to Solo too. I will. I'll send it over. Well. Make sure when you guys are using uh, uh, whatever gloves you guys add to whatever kit, 
um, you want to make sure they're uh, they're like the nitro gloves. You don't want to use the uh, yeah. what's it called? Latex. Um, the powdered latex. A lot of a lot of people have allergies. Yeah. So you don't want to be sticking the gloves in somebody and they have some allergy to uh, uh, to latex. So. Lamb skin. <laughs> Didn't Actually, you just have that, that, that on your MNP? <laughs> oh, so, I don't even know what to call your So, <laughs> again, just to re just to, I'll, I'll send the link so you can post it up so you guys can all see it. But it's the Elite Enhanced IFAC 1. It's $48.99. That's what we recommend to all our students who don't have an IFAC. Um, the Wetsu Trauma Kit, which is the one I have here, if you guys can see it, um, it is 20 bucks. And I keep these everywhere. I keep this one in my everyday carry bag. I keep it in my car. I keep these all over the place. Um, so this is definitely a good kit to have. I also sent um, Solo one of the uh, little red keychains. Do you remember that thing I sent you, Solo? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, um, any of you guys, I keep, I keep one of these in my car. There's these little red bags that GearZone has. And uh, it has gloves in it and a mask, a CPR mask. Um, I strap that onto a lot of my kits. If I have to do CPR on somebody and I don't know who they are, um, you got to take precautions for yourself. You know, if you're even pulling over to help somebody on the side of the highway and you don't know who they are, you got to have gloves. So, you know, don't yes. don't try and do a good deed and then end up hurting yourself. Gloves are very important and any other type of protection. So Absolutely. Now, do you guys uh, still... Uh, whenever if you, I don't know what your uh, CPR training is, but from the last uh, TCCC stuff that I I've had been a part of, I noticed they they took out the 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 breaths in the CPR. They just keep with chest compressions, um, and they've kind of you know done away with the breaths. I didn't know what your training was on that. Um, it's. Uh my girl is actually, uh, she does CPR several times a week. She works in the hospital. Um, they are doing, it's it's like three times the amount of compressions now versus the amount of breaths that you're actually doing. Right, yeah, because uh, what the uh, our instructor was telling us is basically people were, you know, doing compressions and then taking a breath, and it, by the time you stop doing compressions, and to give that breath, you're you're working backwards against yourself. By the time you stop it and start again, and it was better just to go backwards compression. So I didn't know what you guys um, used and what you you know kind of your mindset on that was. Yeah, it's so, um, we, as far as really for most of the situations that we're going to come in contact with, um, you know the. Depending on where you get hit, I mean, we're probably not going to be doing CPR on you. Right. Um, right. Unless somebody decides to have, like, a heart attack or something like that during class. But Right, right. Which, which could come in, which that might happen. But a lot of you have to keep in mind, um, they say, if you can even Google it, but 7% um, of uh, CPR that is done outside of a hospital um, actually works. So just to give you guys it's an idea on the odds, but 7% right. of right. the time when pe when people do CPR outside of the hospital, it, they actually revive somebody. So the odds of you doing it, I'm not saying don't do it, like it ain't going to work, but right. you have to make sure that, you know, you're obviously getting proper training on it and you're doing it correctly. Um, you know, it, and then like I said, the odds of it, my girl had, uh, she was just telling me today she had somebody code on her at the hospital, and uh, they were able to revive, revive, revive the person doing CPR for, you know, 10 minutes. But they've had three other people in the last week that have coded on them, and they've been doing CPR for an hour, and nobody, nobody survived. And these are people that are doing CPR real life, you know, right. five, ten times a week. Um, yeah. So... Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but um, yeah, definitely much. It, it used to be to where back in the day when I was real young, it was like some people were saying do do ten compressions and then do mouth to mouth, ten compressions right. mouth to mouth, and then and then it went up to twenty and then thirty. So um, I thought it, was it 15, varies, 10. and I think I, so that's again, it, not in the emergency room, right. 
But uh, so anyway, um, that's awesome, awesome information to have. Um, but I just, yeah, I just shared those with you solo, by the way. Yeah, I've got them in the internal chat here for the okay. guys of you. Um, hey, uh, so I want to do a screenshot, screen share of the of one of those kits real quick that we were talking about earlier. Dick, can you handle that? Kind of one. I can't even see. Oh, there we go. Uh, do a screen share for us of the uh, trauma kit in internal. Uh, my computer is is like messing up. Can you guys give me like 20 seconds? Why don't we just sure. post the links in the comment box of the YouTube video and they can click on it? Because it doesn't allow you to post links on YouTube because YouTube's oh, a piece of right, shit. Bastards. Don't ever forget what You're a big YouTube, piece really. of shit YouTube is. Is it the AGS trauma I'm kit? I'm sorry. YouTube live, yeah. I should say. Yeah, that's Wait, how's it. that? That better? That works. That works. This is, so this is the, you know, if you uh, <laughs> if you don't have an IFAC right now and you want to get started with something, you can't hardly beat $21. Um, yeah. And yeah. Something's, something's better than nothing. So. A couple a couple things, too, uh, just to throw out there. Um, do you guys all know what a Rescue Me is? Yes. TV do? show. No, well, keychain. You guys know what the, key the rescue me keychain is? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let me let me uh, let me grab one so I can explain this real quick. Um, the wetsuit trauma kit does not come with. Uh, it doesn't come with a couple things. Uh, it doesn't come with an MPA, but like I said, uh, and that's the the nasal airway. Uh, so we use clothes pins for the for the wetsuit kit, and that keeps some of the cost down. The other thing it doesn't come with is uh, a lot of uh, gauze pads for, like, chest wounds, and it doesn't come with shears. Uh, so what I do is, if you guys haven't, if you guys don't have one of these already, I would suggest getting one. Um, this is called a Rescue Me Tool. It's a little keychain. They're, like, 10 bucks on eBay. Um, it's a window breaker that you can keep on your keychain, but the reason I also have it is if you pull it off, See if I can get it in frame here. That's a seatbelt cutter, um, but it also works awesome on clothes. So, like, let's say a dude gets shot in the thigh or something like that, you can actually just take this on the bottom of his jeans and just run it the whole way up his jeans, and it will cut his clothes off faster than a pair of shears will. So, um, something Dick, to keep in mind. Dick, that sounds like something you would like, regardless of an emergency or not. <laughs> I wish I could see my face I'm making right now. <laughs> But, yeah, that's that's what I use instead of shears. Um, like I said, the wet spew trauma kit, uh, that's, this is the – it's the best trauma kit you'll get for 20 bucks. If, if you're looking strictly for cost or you just don't have the money, this will get you to the hospital in time. Um, so that's that's its job. Um, okay. and even, now, here's a question, though. Uh, you yeah. said you personally use the Dark Angel kit. No, I, I don't personally use it. Like, I don't use these. I, I have a Dark Angel kit. Um, and Do you it, prefer that for any other reason? Here's here's my... I think the Dark Angel kit sold, has sold so many products because mainly because of its looks, and, you know, a bunch of guys started buying it, so everybody kind of went that direction. Um, there's pros and cons to it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you open it, it's got a little strap, and basically when you pull that strap, everything comes out. Right. So if somebody gets shot, you know, I don't want to be pulling through straps to get stuff out, but at the same time, something might happen to where somebody's bleeding to where I don't need everything. Mm -hmm. So it's it all comes out. I mean, it's like a party mm -hmm. popper. So... Uh, the Dark Angel Medical Kit is solid. It has a chest seal. It has everything. I mean, it's got you know a de decompression needle. It's got combat gauze. I mean, it's got everything in it, and it comes with a cat tourniquet, um, which is going to be far superior to the the TK4 tourniquet, which is in here. Mainly because of uh, you know if you have if you have somebody that's that's fat or just you know really muscular, um, these they work but they don't work nearly as good as the cat tourniquet does. Right. Um, the cat tourniquet, you can put that thing on until it hurts. Um, this will go on very tight, and it will stop the blood flow, but um, if you have somebody that's really fat, I, I have uh, concerns about it. So Makes sense. Um, uh, the, I prefer the term husky. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, girlfriend, my girlfriend's a big old girl now. Don't be, don't be talking shit about her now. <laughs> I, will say, um, I, will, I will say that uh, rescue me thing, 
Sounds a whole lot like date night to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, it's, way uh, to go! You just more, way to go, like Stefan. You just dreamy. fueled date rape. Date rape. Way to go! Yeah. The <laughs> so the so the Dark Angel kit is is a quality kit. Um, it's expensive as hell. Right. Um, you can buy you can buy three of the enhanced IFAC ones that I shared for the same price. Um, I actually keep one of the enhanced IFAC kits. Um, it has a drop leg. And the part that actually straps on your leg, I actually just strap that on the headrest of my car, and I'll keep that clipped in my car. Um, and then I keep one kit on uh, on my bag that I usually take to the to the range, and uh, I have another kit um, loaded on a bug out bag. So that's smart. So I guess I got a question: Is somebody shopping for an IFAC? Uh, what do uh, what should they look for? What should they make sure it's in there? So if they're not interested in the ones you recommended, what should they make sure they Good have? Good question. Well, there's, there's, you know, there's three leading causes of death, which are going to be your most common. There's critical blood loss. There's going to be obstructed airway, and there's, then there's going to be tension pneumothorax, which is air in the chest. Um, we, when we teach our medical course, uh, which is in our handgun two course, um, the, the primary two fo things that we're focusing on are going to be the most common, which are going to be obstructed airway and critical blood loss. Um, we we have medical training ourselves, but trying to teach something in a there's I mean the me, type of medical training that you go should go through like with Dark Angel those are full two day two day courses on everything in that tiny little kit so there's a shit ton of information to to cover um, showing people where to actually put a decompression needle in their chest and different things like that not everyone is comfortable with that nor do they want to they want to actually deal with that and it kind of scares them away so what we found is <coughs> we cover everything with obstructed airway and critical blood loss um, so if you were to get shot in the leg if you were to get shot in the arm if you were to get shot in the chest or the neck or the stomach what it, what do you do at that point um, and then along with obstructed airway, you know, uh, a lot of people don't put enough time into that. They don't realize how easy it is for the, the person to suffocate if they go unconscious. So um, those are the two main topics that we cover. When, when looking for an IFAC, um, it's not an IFAC if it doesn't have a tourniquet in it. Um, the other items that are really necessities are, are gloves. Um, compressed gauze and some type of compression dressing, whether that be an Israeli bandage or a H bandage. Um, I find that both the Israeli bandage and the H bandage are um, they're they're just as good as they're just as good, but the H bandage will absorb more blood than the Israeli bandage will. So um, those are I mean I could go on and on all day, but those are a couple things that you need to look for when you're looking for a kit. Um, and the, the this kit right here, the wetsuit trauma kit, why I like this one so much, and, and like I said, I'm not pushing this for any reason. I'm not making any money off this, but um, the don't worry, uh, we all shamelessly promote the shit out of stuff the whole all, all right. two hours straight. So you're the reason. Fine. The reason I like this is because even the guy that's cheap as shit can afford it. Yeah. And it 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 covers critical blood loss. It covers obstructed airway, and it will get you to the hospital. And, it, and it's very small. This will actually fit. Um, if you can see my hand here, this will fit in a BDU pocket. So that's why I like this one so much. Um, the enhanced IFAC one, it's a better kit, and it has more stuff in it. Um, but you can't go wrong either way. So well, there you have it, folks. The most information that's good that's <laughs> ever been covered in Opcom has just been covered in the last 30 minutes. So Absolutely. you're done. You don't need. To <laughs> You've gotten don't the best say, you're gonna get. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> St stick around. We're not done yet. No, this is all really good. It could get gonna better. Help. It, it's gonna help trail into when you know. I think we've. This is about the best coverage of an IFAC you're gonna get. I mean, you're getting instructors that are talking that deal with range safety every time they go out there, dealing with shooters that they don't know. And dealing yeah. with people, they don't know where their level of expertise is. They don't know if this is the first time picking up a gun, or if you know they've been doing this for years and they just want to take another handgun one to kind of get themselves <laughs> reassociated with their fundamentals and get back to the core. So somebody that has no idea what to expect has to be prepared for the complete unexpected. So to get this wealth of knowledge is is super important. Whether you're gonna, especially, if, you know, I'm not saying our viewers are cheap. I'm cheap. 
I don't want to spend two hundred dollars on a Dark Angel. I looked at them; they look great, but that's it. They look great. I don't. Right. I don't want anything past that. I don't. I don't care if I'm going to save your life in style. Right. You know, I or or well, I, I want everything. To, if somebody has to, you know, if I get shot and I'm on the range, I want somebody. If they don't have anything, I want anything and everything that they can possibly need right there. Whether or not somebody called 911 or not, I want it all right there, right then. So if somebody knows what they're doing, they can start administering treatment while somebody is calling 911, whatever. I just want it done right then and there. So if it's my life on the line, I'm going to carry it. Why yeah. wouldn't you? That's, One, that's the biggest thing is anytime that somebody does get shot or anytime somebody needs an IFAC, you use their IFAC. The most selfish thing you could do is not have an IFAC and make somebody else use their life-saving tools that may be they may need to save their own life later on, you know. So, okay, hey man, carry thanks your for saving my life. Here's, an, here's 200 bucks back for using your dark angel on me. <laughs> exactly. Carry your right. own freaking life back because I'm using yours to freaking save your life. A, cu a couple things, too, that I want to add to that is, um, you know, make sure you buy a kit. You know, don't don't go out to the, like, <clears throat> don't go out to, like, you know, the dollar store and just start throwing shit in a box and be like, oh, Damn it, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> also... If you are a firearms instructor, like for solo, um, if if all your guys that are responsible have trauma kits, make sure that you guys all have studied each other's trauma kits. So like if like if solo has a trauma kit, but Numps Numpsy has a totally different trauma kit, um, make sure you've gone through his trauma kit and you know everything that's in it. You don't want to be opening it to find out like what you're actually searching for when he takes a gunshot wound to the thigh or something. You know what I mean? So right. yeah. so knowing yeah. knowing what your partner has, like me and Brett, we uh, we know exactly what's in our trauma kits and he knows exactly what to do. So if I get shot and I'm I'm not with it, I can't take care of myself, he knows exactly when he pulls that strap or when he opens my kit what's inside of it and what to do with it step by step. So um, knowing Knowing how to, you know, even even if you don't know how to use your trauma kit, just having one on you, you'd be surprised if if somebody stops and they just happen to be a doctor or something like that, and they don't have a, a kit on them or whatever the case may be. So, nice. good deal. That I mean, I don't even know what else to say about that. You guys yeah. pretty much covered all the bases. Does any anybody else aside from Brett and Stefan, um, Brian, you within? I say what two months ago we're in a uh, was it a handgun or a carbine course? Me? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, carbine course. Um, who? Uh, who's your instructor? I forgot. Um, oh, I the guys from Max Ordnance. That's Academy. it. Academy. Dirt. <coughs> um, That's why I'm white dirt because I forgot. Because Max Ordnance, freaking awesome. Um, what did you go through? Uh, as far as the first bit of uh, like medical briefing, da, da 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 what was there anything different that Max Ordnant did that maybe Steph and Brett or Solo didn't cover, or does it seem no, pretty I, general? I, I I don't. They didn't cover too much. I mean, um, I think what happened was is everybody had some kind of kit on them, and right. um, we went over where everybody's kit was, and um, they did also do the like you said. Um, the, uh, what is it? Uh, not to call nine one one right away, right? Um, because we were, you know, a little bit farther away um, to just assess the situation, uh, and then call nine one one. And um, there's just designated people. Uh, we designated who was going to call if they needed to call nine one one, and um, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, there was a, a little bit of a briefing beforehand. I think if you but, go to a class and you show up and nobody says anything about that, that's probably not too good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, cool. Let's wrap up on, on that then, if, unless there's any more information anybody else wanted to add. Um, well, I was just going to say, uh, people probably should just buy I mean, I don't have one, and I, I should get one. I'm one of those idiots. But um, you should just buy one and throw it in your bag and assume if something goes wrong, you're going to know what to do. You, Make sure you know what's in it. You know how to administer everything, so that when something bad happens, you're not in panic trying to figure out what does what. Well, it's the whole reason you bought a gun in the first place. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's there's the probability of you needing some sort of medical equipment um, 
or you know, in some life-saving equipment in a situation over a firearm that you know is insurmountable compared to the chances of you having to use a firearm um, to save your life. I mean, and we train so much on firearms, so why would you not do the same uh, for medical kit? You, if you're really trained to be prepared and you're really trained to stay alive, uh, medical definitely comes into play there. And you know, just you're playing the numbers. You train for that one percent, and there's a higher percentage chance that you're going to need an IFAC. Why in the world don't you have an IFAC? It's just it's the math. Yeah, and and make sure make sure when you guys have an IFAC, don't just keep it. If if okay, if you're one of those guys and you don't have an IFAC, and then you decide to go buy an IFAC. Don't keep don't keep it in your range bag at the bottom of your closet. And, you know it, it does you no good there. You know especially if you're one that carries on a daily basis, it, it stays in your. If you only have one, it stays in your car. When you go to the range, it goes from your car to your range bag and to the range. And then when you come back, it goes back in your car. It doesn't go. I see so many guys that. Um, Oh, I have an IFAC. Yeah, it's at home. It's in my range bag. It's in my gear. You know, in my closet. You know, exactly. your range, your your IFAC, <clears throat> it. it it won't help just gunshot wounds. If you get in a car accident or if somebody hap something happens right in front of you and you might be able to save somebody's life, um, do you have everything in that kit that could help you in numerous situations. So um, keep it on you. It does no good sitting at home. Right. So, yeah. Same I actually have – yeah, we're, we're actually going to um, get into like our carry bags a little bit later on, maybe uh, later tonight or, or next week. Um you know, and I have a vehicle bag. I have an IFAC in each of my vehicles. I have an uh, IFAC in on both of my range bags um, because, like, like you were saying, you know, if you've got one IFAC and that's all you can afford, make sure you carry that with you. Make sure it changes locations with you. Um, you know, to keep you from forgetting that, I purchased more than one IFAC uh, with the same, you know, same equipment in it in each one. Um, so this going to be there where I, you know, no matter what I'm doing or where I'm going. You know, if everybody, I, I was going to uh, a couple months ago. Well, I would, I did some lag. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Uh, so I was going to say, you know, if everybody's, if you're looking for some training to use the equipment that you're buying, I know uh, the next town over in Milford, New Hampshire, um, they were running a uh, paramedic course, and I think it was like, Eight weeks, and it was like 170 bucks or 150 bucks. And um, you know, just because you take a paramedic course doesn't mean you have to be a paramedic afterwards. But you could probably learn a lot from just even going to like, like sometimes the li the local library, they have like really cheap courses that you can take. You know, to learn or what or know, YMCA? Whatever. Yeah, YMCA. Do you walk um, away with your like CPR certification stuff from taking those classes? Do you know? I did um, with my CPR probably. class. You, you get I, a CPR, I just they, CPR certification, but the, but that's all you get. Normally, like if you go yeah. to take a CPR class, it's normally depending on where you get it done, you can pay anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars for a CPR class. I mean, most of them are around fifty bucks. And uh, but but then again, like a CPR class is, you know, sometimes they're like three hours, sometimes they're four hours long. So. Well, I um and I, <clears throat> I was lucky enough to get one through my old job, um, so I didn't have to pay for it, and I I was the only one in my department that wanted to do it. Um, <laughs> I was like, yes, me, hello. Uh, I don't have to pay for it. I get certified, sure. Um, but I'm, I try to be one of those, I try to be one of those rather, you know, have and not need and even need and not have kind of people. Um, as Solo just said in the internal, two is one and one is none, and I, I try to follow that rule as closely as possible. Yeah. Um, so... Well, I, I suggest if you guys are getting IFAX and you guys are trying to get into that, um, you know, just more preparedness, uh, if, you, if you want to spend more money on a nicer IFAX, do it and make that kind of your dedicated range bag where, you know, obviously if something were to happen, more than likely it's going to happen on the range. But um, 
get you even if it's even if it's not this kit, the wetsuit trauma kit. Get yourself a small kit, uh, uh, and I'm talking a small kit like this. That's twenty bucks, and keep one in your everyday carry bag. So if you guys if you guys carry a laptop bag to work, or if you guys carry a backpack on you, or you have a you know a bailout bag in your car or something like that, keep one on you. If it's too big, if it's you're not gonna carry it. So. Well, there you go. I think um, I think that's about all we can cover as far as IFAX go. Um, and we're hey, gonna so next I'm, week. I'm we're gonna, gonna kind of. I'm gonna try. Go ahead, Tim. Sorry. Hey, why? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try with my horrible connection here to uh, two cents. And part of it is because I I guarantee you guys earlier that I wouldn't say anything as long as nobody said anything about uh, mojo darts or decompression needles or eight. King Gay Cathars, whatever you want to call them. But <laughs> one of my pet peeves is these Dark Angel kits that have these decompression needles. And and no word anywhere uh, of a stethoscope. Um, please, if you guys are ever shooting with me, don't do any lung work on me unless you have a stethoscope. Because I have two lungs. And, and unless you're positive which lung has got the problem... Please don't just start stabbing me with the mojo guy. And, and so, as Dark Angel calls it, a mojo dart and a, and a stethoscope around your neck, then, then by all means start doing one work on me. But in the meantime, please don't, don't just start stabbing me with your damn mo <laughs> mojo dart. Dick, listen um, closely. I, I guess my next thing about IFAX... He just told you not to stab the, him uh, with your mojo. Yeah, Dick. Don't, don't just go get a dark angel. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they call it, a mojo dart. Yeah. Don't be well, stabbing people with your mojo. No I, joke. I mean, it's a... It, it's, yeah, it's a it's a bunch of hype. Like let's let anyways. You know, but, I, like, mojo I, I dart, man. Hair that, one but, but, but if, if you're going to get that legit about it, then... Yeah. And then... Uh, and then my other thing with uh, any kind of IFAC or first aid kit, um, you know, if you're actually out uh, training the way that I would insist you have to, uh, um, you're more likely to get a snake bite where I live than get shot. Um, so it kills me when guys show up and they have these extensive kits, including uh, mojo darts and really nice tourniquets, but they don't have anything for being bit by a diamondback rattlesnake, which is statistically the best way to die around here. So IFACs are not an international standard. Uh, they need to be adjusted to where you're shooting and what you're likely to die from. It's probably not a, a gunshot to the face. Um, uh, shooting that a snake or break your ankle first. What happens if you punch a bear okay, so trap? Guys... <laughs> hey, uh... <laughs> I saw some videos going? of a video hey, dude hey, doing Dick. it earlier. Hey. Hey, Dick. hey, did you hear all that, man? Or did my connection fart out right in the middle of that tirade? You, you got a bunch of it out, but it's kind of like, you know, mom's spaghetti. Most of it was okay, but some of it was just not there, man. No, he's got a point. I mean, right, well, a lot of people buy these kits and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They just buy the kit and they put it on their plate carrier or in their bag and, you know, but hope the they kit, never need to use it. It happens all the time, I'm sure. Well, keep keep in mind a, a, a couple things. A couple things that I'll say about that. The kit is meant to be used on you, usually by somebody else. So you can buy. I'm not saying go buy this expensive kit. I, I don't. I'm not pushing the Dark Angel medical kit. I have one. You know, if I but you haven't heard me push it at all this whole time. Yeah. Um, the dark. I, I was the going to, is meant on you. So if you take a gunshot wound somewhere, go ahead. I I was going a step further than you. I was down on the dark angel kit. <laughs> you were staying right in the middle, and I I'm saying please don't don't get that thing. Right. Well, there 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 are pros and cons of the dark angel medical kit. Yeah, it's um. It's more expensive, but the products that it has in it are more expensive. So, I mean, you're, uh, <coughs> it has a 
probably a thirty dollar tourniquet in there versus a five dollar tourniquet that's in the other kit. You know what I mean? So the the quality of the products that are in the kit are only superb. But also, if you guys want training for medical stuff, um, if you if you pay, I think it's four hundred and fifty dollars. It's one of the courses that Brett and I are doing here in early early two thousand fourteen. Dark Angel Medical does a two day course based on. I mean, it's based on combat wounds only, so knife and gunshot, and they they actually have like live flesh that they incorporate wounds onto and show you kind of how how you take care of different situations. <coughs> the class is four hundred and fifty bucks. It's two days long, and they give you a free Dark Angel medical kit. So they teach you two full days of medical training. Um, on everything in the kit and how to handle different situations, and you get a kit. So Wait, they, do um, they teach you how to handle it when you pull one string and everything comes flying out? Yeah, they teach it all, man. Hey, so then can you tell me how do they how do they teach you to insert the decompression needle without a stethoscope? As far I haven't been in the I haven't been in the course yet. I'm taking I'm taking the course uh, here in 2014. So I don't know how they teach it there. Um, you know, as far as they're they're probably doing it just by feeling and finding the ribs um, is how they're doing it. Well, how do they know how do they know which lung? And how do they as know? Far as yeah, how do they know which one of the lungs, and how do they know how high in the lung? Like how 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 much are they decompressing? How much? You there? He, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. I'm saying, how do they know which one of your two lungs they are decompressing? Well, you know, as far as how I would typically tell is, you know, obviously, if you're looking at somebody's chest or if you've got your head over your chest. One of the lungs, one of the side of your chest, isn't going to be raising at all. Um, you can either, you can either you, you either put your hands on both sides of the chest, and you can actually feel one side of the chest raising and one side of the chest isn't. Um, or, like I said, you can use a stethoscope. You know, if you have a stethoscope, um, that's another option. But that's one of the reasons that we do not teach we do not teach that in our courses. Um, there's too much to it, along with uh, you know, as far as the medical you could be poking in the wrong place. So that's why we focus on the critical blood loss and um, obstructed airway. But I'll let you guys know. As soon as we take the course, we'll give a full review yeah, that'd be great. about how they do it. Tim Please looks, do. Like, looks like a spider like waiting in its web, like, get a little closer. Get a little closer. Gotcha! <laughs> you see him? No one else saw him? No? No one saw it? Nobody? No, I'm just trying... I got, I got let off shine, man. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, that's that's a an hour on medical stuff for you guys. So I hope you all wanted that because you got it. <laughs> Deal with it. Absolutely. Um, you needed it. <laughs> well, definitely, and that's it's it gets it's something that gets swept under the rug. Um, you know, we've got people that are willing to go out and spend the money on this, that, and the other thing, but they're not willing to pay for. You know whether it's the twenty dollar kit or fifty dollar kit, and they're not willing to pay to learn how to use it, or at least research somewhat, do some kind of. Uh, you know, you're gonna spend this much time and energy and money on learning how to use your firearm, but you're gonna spend the same amount learning what you probably will have to use more likely than your firearm. You know? Yeah. So it's important. Um, I don't care if you think it is or you don't think it is. Uh, it is. So. There you go. Um, and two. <laughs> uh, what the hell are you uh, laughing at? <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> can, I, can I talk about that it, Richard Incognito guy just for like 20 oh, seconds? Oh, Christ, yes. All right, before I got cut off earlier, hopefully <laughs> knock on wood or something, it won't happen again. The whole story is not the important part. The important part is his name is Richard Incognito. His name is Dick in Disguise. <laughs> and, and, and no one's even making mention of that. That is the most ingenious name his parents could have ever given him, ever. And the thing is, is Dick in Disguise turned out to be a dick. <laughs> there we go. Poof, mind right. blown. That's all I needed to say. I'm good. 
All right. Well, um, getting off of uh, med stuff and still moving on to, I guess, staying in the instructor realm, um, it looks like Spiro, who is busy being a businessman, uh, myself and uh, I guess Dick will all be attending uh, Solo's Handgun 1. Um, forgive me, I'm reading and doing this at the same time. I don't need a handgun one. I don't need it, but I'm going anyway. <laughs> no, that's, I, what, that's what everybody says. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my. Body. Yeah. We, oh, so, so. what about handgun two? Can we just skip handgun one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This will. This will actually technically be my, maybe my third handgun one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm Wait, gonna be is there. this handgun one we're going to? Yeah. So uh, you don't even know okay. what you're doing. Yeah, Nobody yeah, can follow me. All I'm thinking about is sleep at this moment. Spirit but just, just shows me. back up. He's been I on love the phone it. I love hour. how he was all disappointed. We were just talking about people that thought, I just want to do handgun two, and then Spirit was like, "Oh man, we're going to a handgun one." <laughs> we just, but see the thing is, when we, when you can shoot, you're kind of like, uh. I mean, I'm not saying I don't need it because we all know I can't do certain stuff like listen properly. Why? Did you get bored? <laughs> why? Why did you get bored of our last handgun one class? The very first handgun one class I took from you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the first two hours was kind of boring. Three hours, yeah, it was kind of boring. Yeah. So you won't well, be bored well, the entire day. Should I stop around like noon or something? Well, I'm a... That yeah. wasn't <laughs> – but, I mean, it's obviously it's nothing personal. It's just I, I was – I don't want to say I was beyond that or past that, but – because I wasn't. Nobody ever is. Um, yeah. But the things that we were doing at that time – were things, were that, things I, that I was already, very comfortable doing and I right. already had done, so I wasn't pushed out of my comfort zone. Wait, uh, I know what I'll do. I'll shoot lefty the entire day. There you That'll go. That'll piss me off. Yeah. I'll do that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Solo's a lefty anyway. Oh, yeah, that's – never mind. That's why the so, joke went, woo. So, how, yeah. so if he's a lefty, yeah. then how's he going to teach me how to shoot right-handed? <laughs> oh, I Actually, there are some right problems with that. You so. just gotta show up and see, man. I have right-handed oh. help, and I can shoot right-handed as well. We, so we're talking about guns, now, right? yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Kind of, kind of weirding me out over here. Yeah. So I guess to uh, further expand on, okay, if medical's covered at least as far as instructor uh, instructors go, and, and but for those of us who haven't, well, not us, but for some people who haven't been to a handgun one that might be interested in taking one, uh, maybe we can take this time, not even a handgun one, a handgun one, carbine one, class in general, just haven't been out. Yeah, um, training. Training, which we stress every week, whether, no matter what comes up, you'll hear us train, 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 train. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, Tim even has a segment dedicated to how you can train inexpensively. But if you decide that you want to take it to the next level and go to an instructor, how do you, f in your state, whether you're in California, who I can tell you great instructors in California, um, or you're in, you know, Texas, and we've got Kansas is here, um, North Carolina's in the house, Washington, we've got, you know, people from everywhere. Who's from Kansas? Frontline Defense, me and Stefan. Yeah. Oh, Stephen and Did you guys know Dorothy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. She oh, was, man. was she so, a pretty old lady? <laughs> so the redheads. How oh, do you guys yeah. suggest somebody going? Solace. You know, let's say it's, you know, Joe Schmo. I don't have the money for Chris Costa, but he just happens to be coming to my town next week. How can I get some proper handgun instruction, but I don't have to pay six hundred and seventy-five dollars to go to a class? I want to pay a hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars. That's you what I can afford. Sore knees, man. Get some really good binoculars and uh, sit across the road. <laughs> yeah. <Funny. laughs> yeah. Um, so, Brett, Stefan, Solo, what do you suggest to somebody who? might just be realizing, okay, I bought a gun, I've had it, I've been shooting, I can stand in one place and shoot really well, I'm good at it, but uh, how do I go about finding the right instructor for me in my state? Normally, um, that's, a, that's a good question. The, the ranges usually know. Um, right. Like everybody, all the, all the shooting ranges around our town, um, they know who we are, and they... 
they see that we've, you know, constantly been having students come through their ranges to reserve rooms and teach courses there. And so when people go up to the range, they'll say, hey, I'm looking for some tactical training or I'm looking for this or this. And uh, the the people at the front desk there will typically either pass down one of our cards or they will recommend us. Um, and really it's just work off work off referrals. That's kind of how we've worked on um, finding most of our clients. Good deal. Because we've been talking uh, amongst ourselves about uh, bad trainers. Like we've found videos of people on YouTube that <laughs> probably should never be training people to begin with. So mm -hmm. I guess the question is not only how yeah. do you find a good one, but how do you make sure that you're not wasting time and money into something that should be training to begin with? Yeah. How much? I, I, would, I think I'd like to ask others. So I like to ask somebody else. But go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I'm heading on this one, but yeah. Well, I'll just say one thing. Um, it's really going to be personal referrals, um, I think. I think you need to talk to somebody that's been through one of the courses and ask them, you know, one, if there's any other courses they've taken around town to give get a good idea. Um, the If the person, if the only course that the person has taken is your course, Handgun 1, then they're going to give you amazing reviews. They have nothing to compare you to. So if you find somebody in town that has taken three or four other courses with local guys and they can give you, still give you an amazing review, then that says a lot. Um, there's a lot of people that we have found locally um, that their idea of training is running you through a bunch of fucking drills and not giving you really any instruction. So um, the, we have people that have taken courses with other instructors around town that are coming to our courses and we're having to teach them how to actually grip a firearm and, and have proper stance. Um, and, and, they, and, you know, they've taken, like, an advanced course with somebody else. Um, so, in my opinion, if you've trained somewhere and, and you don't know how to properly hold a handgun, you should probably go ask your money back. So, um, yeah. I can't you know, tell you how many people have actually come out there and, like, in the emails leading up to the class, been like, yeah, we've taken a couple, like, um, room clearing courses or yeah. this and this and that, and you're like, okay. Or <laughs> I've shot competition for years. I was sitting next out to there. one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go move on past that. But yeah, it, it's just it, it's astounding because you're like, okay, well I shouldn't have to worry about these persons too much. They, you gotta completely clear the slate um, because what they see as training and what is actual training um, generally differs um, a good bit. But uh, yeah, I think uh, we had a we had a guy that came down and took a course uh, <laughs> that worked at the uh, local FBI branch. And he's, he's been with the FBI for 18 years, um, worked street crimes. I mean, he's done a whole bunch of shit. And uh, we had to rework his entire grip, his stance. He didn't know, like, kind of how to use his eyes with certain distances when shooting handguns. And he just he was having trouble with everything. I mean, he could sit there and he could shoot. He could shoot bullseyes. But if it had anything to do with moving or um, follow-up shots, he, he just was terrible. Um, so, you know, but I always tell people training is the, the most important thing you can do. And it's, I'm not saying that just because I want to, I want you to get in class and give me money. But, um, at the same time, the people that don't, don't get training, they just end up developing scars that are harder to fix in the yep. long run. Cause then you got some guy that's been doing something wrong for the last couple of years and then. All of a sudden, within 10 minutes, you're trying to get them to change it. And uh, if you don't start out doing it right, it's just going to be that much harder. So you said that guy was an officer. He he worked for the FBI. That's Ooh. scary. So from your experience, do and, do police officers not have enough training? Um, I think the biggest thing that and Solo and I have discussed this before. The biggest problem that we now we train we. Do, if you see any of our marketing, we train military, we train police, we train civilians. That's pretty much what we're we're known by. Um, now, police are the hardest people to get in to train because um, they have the, they they have the biggest. I'm, just, I'm laughing because um, solo solo every time he hands a, a card out to a, an LEO at you know a gun show or something, he gets the no no I'm good I'm LEO I don't need that. 
Yeah, yeah. We, and then I usually, I usually say something sarcastic back because um, I'm very confident that my my girlfriend uh, can outshoot them any day of the week. Well, and that um, you've already you've lost the sale anyway, so you might as well just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I say. They're never going to take a course. They they are beyond they are beyond civilians. They're at a higher level. And the the sad thing is is there's people out there that will go get training from police officers just because they are police officers. Yeah. Um, and they, they think they're they're set to this higher standard like when they're hired on by the police department, they're hired on because they're amazing shooters. They're not. They're hired <laughs> on they're 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 law enforcement officers. They're hired on because they're good people. And then they're they're taught the basics on how to shoot, and and that's about it. That's the extent of it. So um, no, our law enforcement officers are typically our worst shooters in the class. Our our best shooters are are typically our civilians because they take it the most serious. So now where does feel, the military I've, fall? Yeah, can I take uh, mil- that one for the military? Yeah, yeah well, I'll say I'll say I'll say one thing about military, and then I'll let you take it. Uh, our military guys, um, they struggle in our courses, um, and it's not all of them, but as you know, most people are, they, most of the military guys, the the handgun is the, the gun that they spend the least amount of time with out of everything. So it's it's carbine is number one and then handgun the handgun is kind of their backup weapon. Yeah, so secondary. They're not every, every every single they're not they're not bad. Um, but I will tell you that um, we haven't had a lot of the military guys that have came came into our courses that have been squared away dudes. Like they like we're still fixing their stance and we're still fixing their grip and we're still fixing a, a, a number of different things. But but then again we have a lot of guys that are military guys that come into our courses that um, they take their shit real serious and and they're amazing shooters. So um, it's a variety, but I would say LEOs are definitely the worst that are in our classes. Um, military That's are just better. so ironic. Yeah. So. Oh man. Tim, what were you going to say a minute ago about the the military that we were talking about a second ago? Well, well, I mean, I want to demystify this whole thing instead of making it worse. It's really pretty simple. First of all, when you go to the gym, the guys that training don't have a personal trainer with them. They're doing it uh, um, over there in the corner on their own. And like I said many times, you can't train until you know yourself and you know your buddy. So number one, the objective of any instructor is to get off of that instructor, not to stay there in those classes. You can become class junkies really quick and go from one instructor to the next and start to idolize this instructor and want to be exactly like him. That shouldn't be the point at all. If you're just going to the gym to hang out with your personal instructor, you're not training yet. So what I would say, number one, for training is one of the best things to do in those classes is find somebody to actually train with. Use it as a networking opportunity because some of the best guys that I found to shoot with were guys that I met in classes. So, So the original question was kind of, well, this instructor, that instructor, hey, what instructors have a bunch of good dudes that go and, and, and show up there and then try and network with those guys? Because if you want to pay uh, $250 for a day of shooting, you're not going to do a lot of shooting. So, so number one, I think the real training starts long after the personal trainer. Now, I'm not minimizing what you guys do. Personal trainers are important. And when you wander into a gym, if you don't know how to do the technique of a bench press, you should probably start with a personal trainer. But don't stay with the personal trainer. That's not where the training happens. Well, I think the whole thing about being a, you know, teaching shooting classes is that we're teaching them how to practice too. And I think that's a big thing to, you know, to come off of the of the classes. That's one thing that I've noticed in, you know, because I've been to a few and it's what you take home with you and then how you train after that. The, the, the classes have provided me with a good platform, but it's where I go after that. Now, if I want to go to a different instructor, <clears throat> or, luckily enough, you know, High Capacity TV was kind of founded out of people that have taken classes or haven't taken classes, and we group together to learn from one another and teach one another. Um, I might be in a similar situation to Tim where, you know, I, I, I want to take classes just because I want to. <clears throat> 
but right. I want to see what kind of tools I can add to the toolbox. I'm I'm, I'm not going to sit there and sorry to say it like this. I'm not going to sit there and just suck instructors' dick the whole time because uh, I don't give a shit. They're they're there. I'm paying them to give me tools to add to my toolbox. I will yep. take with them. I'll, I'll take what I want and what I need. And I might take something that I don't care about, but I might be able to modify that to what works for me. Um, so the whole instructor glorification thing, we touched on it a few weeks ago talking about you know instructor worship. Like I, I said, it, we, I compared it to church. People put on their best yeah, clothes. They, they, they put on their best clothes. They put on you – know, they kit the fuck out like full retard, and they put on their best show, and they bring their coolest stuff, and they go to church to worship their god. Um, I'm using that term loosely, not religiously. Um, but you've got people, and I'm I'm not clowning on on Chris Costa or on Travis Haley because they are phenomenal instructors. But and and I would love to take a class from any of them. But and to to go there to show off and to present this look at me, I'm a full on operator kind of mentality is bullshit, and it's stupid. Because you're undermining what you're really there for. You need to go there, yeah. learn, yeah. and take from it. And, and, the, and, uh, uh, go ahead, Philip. I, what I was going to say was at just about every one of my courses, um, and if you've been to my course, uh, you know I preach mindset the entire time. And uh, I get picked on in Opcom because I'm the mindset guy. Um, but what I like to tell people is you don't pay for a day of instruction for, for an end result. It's not go there, buy this, you've got this. Um, you're going there to train. Um, you're at a certain level in your training you know, before you go. You hope to advance during the training that, and also take away tools that are going to allow you to advance from that, from that day forward. Um, so I, I try to tell people not to look for an end result, but a new starting point from, from where you're training now to where you're going. Um, you, you go to a training course to build tools, to, to, to be able to get tools and gain knowledge, um, to be able to go back home and go back to that range or your backyard and practice the way you were doing before, but now doing it properly. or you know, now training completely differently because you've come to a course and you know what you're doing more so than you did before. Um, so you're looking for a new starting point, not not a end result. I think the people that get disappointed the most are they pay all this you know, all this expensive money on these expensive trainers they and they go to come, home. come out full operator. Yes, and they and, and, they and one day or out. three days. Yes, and, 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 and it doesn't work that way. And, you know, but. But again, not to demystify guns, but, but you know, it's no different than studying anything else. The best professors in college, the best instructor in anything is the guy that ignites your passion for it. Not that beats you with the textbook and says, oh, no, 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 that's not the right equation. When you find an instructor that ignites your passion for something and you go after class and you study it with your buddies, that's a damn good instructor. If, a, if yeah. you go to an instructor and all he is is technicalities and he keeps throwing the book at you and he shuts you down, and he cripples you so that the only place you feel like you're getting good instruction is with him, well, come on. How is that good instruction? Yeah, and so you're it's no good different instructor. than anything else. Just, well, and, and that's the thing is just, hey. just, because, Thanks. just because it's guns just because it's guns doesn't mean different rules apply. Good instructors ignite your passion for what you're doing. You're obviously there because you're, you were excited that's about it when timism. you showed up. Did I miss the that's a tamism. That's the reality of it. It's just, an instructor is an instructor, so it's a gun. That, so it's a gun this time. There's no magic about a gun. It's just a tool. If the dude ignites your passion for using that tool, you'll figure out the right way to do it because you won't stop talking about it. You'll get involved in it. You'll go talk to other guys about it, and eventually you'll start to you'll start to figure out what's right. Not from one guy, but from your own passion. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, we we're in this. We're hey, in the same having boat, said so that, like... have. Go, go ahead. I was gonna say, having said that, we solo introduced me. Yeah, having having said that, solo introduced me to my new hero this last week. This this guy this guy Patrick, 
McNamara. <laughs> Pat McNamara. Yes. Dude, dude <laughs> I, I, watch, I watch videos of that guy and get fired up. I want to go dude, he's to awesome. Toycraft, too. He's so good. He's the, guy, he's the macho man of shooting instruction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, brother! He's the ultimate warrior who meets the macho man of shooting instruction. He's amazing. Oh, dude. That guy, five minutes of that guy got <laughs> so fired up, dude. I wanted to go shoot like 100 rounds right then, dude, from watching that guy. Let's yeah. get some. If you're not <laughs> familiar with Pat McNamara, look him up uh, right Pat now. McNamara. It's this big yeah. ginger. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm going to jack up you down. up. Like, if you look at me, I will destroy you with my eyes. Just huge motherfucker <laughs> that does these runs and gets the biggest fucking gun boner doing this. <laughs> he is so excited. No matter what. It doesn't matter if he's just doing a one in five or if he's doing whatever he's doing. Yeah, we're going to screen share it. Can you send that to Dick and get that set up? Um, yeah. Send him a link. It doesn't matter what but this that, man is doing. He gets so pumped up, and he gets the user, just the viewer, not the user. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, the user. No, he gets the viewer so amped that you look at him, and you're like, I don't care if he's screaming at me or dude, if he, it, I don't care what he does. Just And at the end me. of the video, and at the end of his videos, he shows you his shot clock, and he's like, oh. I don't even know if that's a good time, but get on. And that's awesome. The guy's not schooling you. He's not showing you, like, oh, look at my time. It's better than yours. The dude's rolling all over the ground. The guy's doing splits on the ground saying, this is freak show mode. And he's, like, doing the splits. I don't even know what he's doing. And he doesn't even seem to care, dude. He's all about the love of the gun, and I'm going to go blow shit up, guys. And, dude, that gets you amped up and makes you want to go train harder and makes you want to do more push-ups. That guy is a damn good instructor. I mean, I think from watching his videos, it seems to me like that guy channels his energy. I mean, he exudes the passion that yeah. he has for firearms, and it's contagious. It makes you yeah. want to go figure out what's going on. Yeah. I've, uh, one of my uh, instructor friends from down in Monroe – uh, he'll actually be there Saturday, uh, helping me instruct and taking some photos for us. Um, you, so you can ask him because he just took the last handgun and rifle class that he had, and he told me, and he's taken a lot. He's been the um, uh, numerous of the large name instructors or, uh, you know around, and he says hands down the best uh, class he's ever taken. So I'm I'm ready uh, to take that class whenever he comes to town, and I'm still over here. Uh, looking for that link that I shared. Solo, uh, I think he's uh, coming to Kansas City sometime, isn't he, Stefan? Yeah, he's coming in, uh, like, I think in March. Oh, March my God, go. Make go, a road trip, buddy. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Go. <laughs> I will I'm try my money. damnedest to come with you. Holy crap. Yeah. And I said, you guys, if, if the class sucks, don't tell me about it because I'm the only one on here. <laughs> I'm the only one on here that doesn't have, like, a training idol or something. I'm like, yeah, come on. whatever. So, seriously, if this guy, Patrick Magnamaro, turns out to be a flop, don't tell me about it. I need, I need an icon. On. And this guy <laughs> seems... Well, He's to, the real be, deal. to be quite honest, you know you know who uh, Brett and I is uh, is number one on list? Number one on our list to go train with next is Stephen Pinot. So... Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I've been... in, in my... my 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 thoughts on that is, I don't think there there's there's a lot that goes into being a good instructor. Um, you know, you have to be a good speaker. You have to be able to develop a good curriculum. Um, you know, you have to be able to put it together in a timely fashion to where it all kind of makes sense and it goes together and it's in the correct order. Um, so, the people that are that have that background. I'm not saying that if you're Delta Force or something like that, you aren't going to make a good instructor, but um, it isn't for everybody. And uh, everything that I've heard of from Stephen Pinot is he he breaks it down in different ways than any other instructor has put it together. And uh, I'm I'm very interested to go to take a course with him. I mean, I, I don't I don't base I don't judge anybody by you know. Well, if they were a Navy SEAL or if it was Stephen Pinot or if it was some other guy nobody had ever heard of, you know, if if, if they got raving reviews about it and it's not going to break my bank, I'll I'll jump in. So yeah. I tried to ask him if he had any uh, 
uh, like carbine classes and uh, handgun classes in one weekend. And he said maybe in 2014, because if I'm going to drive down to Texas, you know, for some weekend, I would want to make the most of it. So yeah, that'd be cool I mean, if he could. I mean, I'm, I'm going to show this. This actually made uh, Stephen Pino a little jealous on Instagram earlier today. He got mad that I got these and he didn't. These are the. Um, I don't know if you can get. I'll try and get in real close. Can anybody name that round? Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, I saw that. Are those right. the bear something? or the... Name that round? No, what You name that round. You're anybody? the one showing it to us. I'm curious to see if anybody else can. I can go read your, your post on Instagram. You shut your mouth. <laughs> you cannot. You're not allowed to. <laughs> Just curious to see if anybody can name this round. No? All right. We give these, up. Are the, these are the Lehigh Defense Maximum Expansion Solid Copper Rounds. I Stephen Pinot turned me on to these. And then, um, but they didn't get the good reviews like you thought, right? Oh no, dude! The reviews I saw were stellar. Watching oh, really? the way okay. these things expand blew my mind. Um, well, I th what was the one though with him shooting through the the, through the uh, glass, and he glass. said it was horrible. That yeah. was the civil defense. Yeah, civil oh, defense. Those were the yeah. liberties. Yeah, those were the liberties. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I watched these in multiple ballistics gel tests, and the expansion blows the shit out of any other 45 hollow point I've seen. And the way these things pedal and open up uh, is slices deep. So for all those people that um, that carry quote unquote seasonal ammo, here's my little rant: seasonal ammo is fucking stupid. Anybody that subscribes to the whole, i got to carry plus PE because of this in the winter and blah, blah, blah. Why not carry it in the summer too? It's a high pressure, it, 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 why not? Because what if the dude that's robbing you just got off his motorcycle and he's fucking in full leathers? I mean, and it's the middle of the summer. It doesn't matter. So why not carry it anyway? I'm going to go for maximum expansion. I'm going to, I mean, look, these things are ridiculous. Um, I, I'll try and post it. Let me... I'm getting an internal post a picture of um, what these things do when they expand. And if you guys want to check it out, it's Lehigh, L-E-H-I-G-H. -H. Um, and I posted these to P today, and Pinot was like, I can't wait to get them. I'm like, dude, I have them. They're right here. Like, yeah. check them. And I'm uh, what, stoked. Want... To do, they come in all, do they come in all calibers? They do come in all calibers, and they have multiple. Like, these are the maximum expansion. They do um, maximum frangible. They do, like, three or four different types in not only handgun, but also rifle calibers. And the ballistic gel tests, not only from Lehigh, but from other independent reviewers, were insanely impressive through cardboard, through glass, through plywood, whatever. Um, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I happen to work for an <laughs> ammo manufacturer, and I deal with ammo all day, and I'm so stoked to have these right now. These things gave me the biggest break-in-my-house boner in the world. Um, <laughs> Breaking my house, bro. Right. I think we're just uh, making stuff up now. <laughs> but uh, to get back to, to how many rounds did you shoot of it so far? I haven't, dude. I just no. got them in just now. I haven't shot them yet. I need to test them. You need to send. I gotta test, test them first. This so I can I'm make. I'm sending you shit, motherfucker. This is fifty dollars a box. <laughs> how Holy much? Crap. These well, are you, four, four, you 40, send some to Stephen. First, you send first, some to Pano. First round is gonna is gonna stovepipe. Yeah, Watch that's it. what it's gonna hey, do. It's if gonna it happens, break it open. happens, and I'll and I'll do a Double YouTube feed. review on it. But and I won't carry it until I, I shoot it and test it first. But I'm just stoked um, to get them in. What's the? Right. Uh, is there, do you notice any weight difference in your loaded magazine in the right in the pistol than the st like standard 45? Is there like a major weight difference for carrying it around? Or I haven't loaded them to to and, and to check them yet. I know the civil I'm, defense is a huge difference. Well, yeah, the civil defense can't go through glass. Yeah. Um, well, those Lehigh's though, won't they be a lot lighter? I'm, you know, I don't think so, because the grain count. Let me. See. What's the grain is on those? I just figured the copper would be. Well, I guess I mean a little lighter. Those, than it could. But. It's a full copper as opposed to lead. And, yeah, right. It's full, fully solid copper piece. Um, these are the 174 grain, 45 ACP. Um. And I don't know. I'm actually kind of curious to Spiro. Maybe I'll bring one in to work, and we can disassemble it and fuck with it. That sounds like a plan to me. But um, <laughs> HCTV is going to do a ballistics gel test on them, just to show you an, a more independent review of what they can do. Um, 
But Dick, do you have the, any of those Pat McNamara videos loaded? Ready I got to go? one up. Yeah, there we go. Got just, one, we got to we got to show that. Uh, hold on a second now. Uh, I'm up to turn my speakers on, so y'all all have to sh- prepare to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's already housed. Listen, guys, I got some new moonshine in. <laughs> Oh my God! I don't even hey. know what I have been doing. Can you send some to Kansas? I can send as much as you want to Kansas. I live 20 miles from Wilkesboro, North, Virginia, uh, North Carolina. But said Virginia. <laughs> I'll take. I might take like, you up on that. All you gotta do, man. Never mind. I ain't gonna talk about some illegal activities right now. <laughs> <laughs> all Knock right. three times and put the money into the. Can y'all, stump. can y'all see all of this? Or just I can part? see a black screen. Oh, there we go. Now we see all of it. What in the name of God's green gooch? I'm about to say Aaron's. <laughs> but what? Like, listen, all I gotta say is you gotta wipe every now and then, man. I mean, come on now. All right, now hang on a second. I had to come over here and I had to, I had to, pop, I had to stop something else because it's making noise back here in the background. It's pissing me off. All right, Is this now. that kettlebell one? Yes. I don't know. It's in some French or something right Just here. freaking push. <laughs> Say something yeah, in French. Colin. For Blaze Ops. So, <laughs> I've got a uh, L Press setup, but I'm going to shoot a rifle and pistol. So I got the MGM steel out of it, five yard increments, <laughs> at ten. This is a uh, it's a good mechanics drill, and it's pretty easy, unless of course you want to make it hard. Just so happens, I've got two 90 pound sandbags over there, <laughs> and a 60 foot fast drill, and two 70 pound kettlebells. Let's get some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a prance, man. <laughs> what is he wearing? Cree precisions? And... <laughs> dude is huge. This dude is yeah. a beast. It's a, it's a sh- brick shit house. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even look like he's picking those Watch this. This, is, this right here is 140 pounds. All right. Dick, can you maximize this? I mean, he's <laughs> just a mess. Look at this. 140 pounds. He's pulling, he's pulling me and a dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's practicing for his kill switch tryouts. Yeah. Nails it. I love the ending. <laughs> See, smoking bag. <laughs> Sixty-two. Get you some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy's awesome. So, if you haven't learned anything from us tonight, you've just learned that. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's that's my that's. They can't that's have that guy on top shot. He'll, he'll eat the other contestants. Oh, he'll eat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else feel like you just Drunk. have the weirdest brain ever? <laughs> I, I, like I just thought the macho man tried to teach, a ginger macho man just tried to teach me how to shoot. I thought Dimebag Daryl had come back and decided he was going to butt fuck down James Yeager while he's, you know, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Man, get you some, man, man. Watch me pull this shit across the yard, man. <laughs> so oh, that's man. a prime you know, example. Next time he should pull his lawnmower across the yard, then he'd have his yard mode. <laughs> or pull, or pull a cow, or pull a cow across his yard, real slow motion like, so he'd have like a path eating. I hit a cow the other night, guys. That was fun. You did. That's not a lie either. <laughs> I ran over a cow. That's fun. I made the craziest damn noise you ever heard in your life, man. Oh, Pow! Man. <laughs> <laughs> Pow! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> and the cop, the cop was all like, you hit a what? <laughs> then, then he spent 25 minutes trying to find the cow emblem in his automated computer drawing system so he could animate the accident. <laughs> I can't find a I can't find a cow in here nowhere, man. Well, man, it's spelled C O W. Put it in the search engine. <laughs> he opens his search engine, types in the word letter C, and a damn cow pops up. He's like, well, "What do you know? I should be a damn cop." <laughs> I swear I'm crying. <laughs> Don't cry, man. She'll come back eventually. <laughs> Moonshine uh, is on a different level, boy. I think we have speared. We have let the moonshine take over. We peered into a cow. I, I didn't even drink all that much. There it is. I started down here. <laughs> I down here. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god! Oh crap! <laughs> All right, so you guys have stuck with us until the the weird part of Opcom. Uh, that didn't take very long. <laughs> it only took an hour and a half. I don't um, know. Usually it's about five minutes in, and we're talking about something else. So yeah. there you go. If you want to learn, if you want to take any firearms courses, and Pat McNamara comes anywhere near you, run. fucking go <laughs> or run really far away. <laughs> Take think... one and do it as fast as you can. Could you imagine eating dinner with him, man? No. <laughs> I'm two salads. Go. <laughs> I had a salad. I think his course is like five. I, I don't want a salad. I want a whole garden. <laughs> hey, uh... Seven thirty six. Get you some. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's shot time now. How fast he can eat the salad. <laughs> and, and Ooh, yeah. like, that was eight, like, eighteen seconds. Get he's some. Like, he's all like, <laughs> he's like, I don't want no ranch on that. No, no, I want Thousand Island. But they don't, he doesn't even eat the Thousand Island. He eats both the salads and then shoots the Thousand Island like a shot. <laughs> then he goes, get you some. Man. Yeah, man. That's how, that's how he'll do it. Yeah, I don't care how much he charges. I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I he will beg tried... him. I'll be like, dude, can I film this for my fucking YouTube channel? <laughs> Please. Anytime you got something to say, just walk toward where my camera is, grab the camera, and scream at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to do. <laughs> oh my god, I hurt. I like how he, I like how he pops out of the left side of the camera every time he turns. It's one of his videos. He's he's, he's always like. <laughs> 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 How did I get a hernia, man? <laughs> oh, I think. <laughs> We're here on Opcom. Join us, won't you? <laughs> we'll just oh. laugh our asses off. Yeah. Ooh, that's, all, that's all we do. <laughs> what have we learned? Um, <laughs> you know, Something about IFAX uh, and, and my gingers. From. What about fitness when it comes to instructing or training? Uh, how I much mean, do you honestly think fitness comes like into it? Somebody like that could crush a 1911 with his jaws. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, we were talking about it earlier. I think it might have been before. Oh, you buzzkill. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep laughing. I'm just going back to watch the video. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm just kidding. I love you. Everybody always makes fun of me. Because um, we love uh, you. Yeah, that's what it is. But, uh, like, so, say you go take some instruction somewhere, and this guy is is overweight. What do you say about that? What do you think about oh, the... Larry Vickers! Oh. Woo! Um, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, nobody's, naming, nobody's naming names. No, no let's, let's not name names here. Um... But uh, are you saying you know, the instructors or the, the yeah the instru you know, you talk well you talk well obviously as, as shooters we need to know that physical fitness comes into training you know a good good deal um, but when it comes to how much worth do you put on you know a, an instructor's fitness level you know, if you have an overweight guy that can shoot what do you what's your take on that what do you because there's a there's a lot of write ups right now. Um, out there on the internet about, you know, um, overweight instructors and people that aren't 
in shape being instructors and if they should even be instructing. Um, so, I, and honestly, I think it comes down to mindset. I, I mean, yeah, you can shoot, but I think people do tend to use their firearm as a crutch rather yeah. than a tool. Um, so, anyway, let's start over, I guess, with, with Brett. What do you guys think, you know, when it comes to something like that, what do you say when somebody asks you that kind of question? Well, I know what you're. I know what you're talking about. There's been a lot of discussion saying that if uh, you know, if, if an instructor isn't serious enough with his his health, you know, how serious is he taking his firearms training? You know, if he's if if he won't go to the gym and stay in shape, and he's got a huge fat belly, but he's trying to teach a you know a Big course man. or run a, run a certain drill, it's hard to take him serious. It's kind of like um, I saw a couple and you know, personal trainers that were up at uh, Gold's Gym the one day and they were overweight and they were, you know, giving personal training tips. You know, it's kind of hard to take them serious. So, yeah. um, it's it's hit or miss. I mean, I've seen some big dudes that can move, that can move, you know, they can move fast. Um, but, you know, it just, I think there's a balance between it and, and I wouldn't ever say to somebody like, show up and be like, oh, man, you're, you're pretty overweight. Like, I'm not going to take your course or something like that. But right. at the same time, it's it's hard to take them as serious as somebody else that is takes personal fitness real serious and takes um, – because let's face it, if you're not in good shape, it's it's harder to defend yourself, you know, whether it's hand-to-hand yeah. -hand or whatever. So, Yeah. I think – I mean – I think there is something to be said about you know, um, physical fitness when it comes to instructing and and training. Um, as a, I honestly think it would come down to the instructor's attitude towards it. You know, I'm not going to sit there and potentially judge somebody's uh, somebody based off of their physical fitness or try to discredit their potential knowledge based off of, um, you know, their their weight or, you know, their physical inability or, or ability. But I think that if, if a good instructor would at least bring that up, you know, saying I, I, pro I can't really get into prone very well or I can't get to these positions. Um, and that as long as they are aware uh, that they're if, as long as they haven't allowed their firearm to become their crutch, um, and they share that with everybody else. Um, you know, there are big guys out there, there are small guys out there. Um, uh, so I mean, I, I think there's a lot of worth for some of the articles that are out there, but I would want to get to know. I'd, I'd want to speak with the instructor, see what his mindset was on that so that before I would potentially judge them and just kind of discredit their, their potential knowledge on a, on a subject based off of, you know, their uh, physical fitness. So I, I think one of the big things, too, is, you know, when it comes to personal protection or, or your if the type of courses that you're teaching, which are like both you and me solos, are defensive pistol courses, you know, we talk a lot about other things not that aren't related to just the pistol. And if right. if you carry if you carry a gun and your gun is your you know, let's say you don't you don't you choose to not get any hand to hand training courses under your belt or anything else like that and you can't physically defend yourself properly but you carry a gun. If the gun is your only go-to, you know, if it's if it's the only thing in your toolbox, if somebody jumps you or if somebody starts a fight or somebody gets in your face and says, I'm going to fucking whoop your ass, then you're probably going to pull that gun sooner than you needed to and end up shooting that yep. person. So yep. um, that's, that's why, you know, in our courses, we, we talk about gear. In the beginning of our courses, we talk about... Um, you know, here are the reasons I carry a flashlight. I don't think it, I don't think necessarily that you know at two o'clock in the afternoon when I'm in Walmart the lights are going to go out. But if they do, that's one reason I carry it. The other reason is is I can crack somebody over the head with it, and you know that's just a second option that I have before I go to my handgun. And same thing with knives, and same thing with, you know I could go on on and on about the gear that we talk about in the beginning of class. But I always tell people if if you're getting a gun 
to protect yourself and you don't carry a knife or you don't carry pepper spray or you don't carry something else and somebody says, I'm going to kick your ass, you're going to pull the gun sooner than you need to. And if you haven't been in a fight and, and you carry a gun before, that day that that actually becomes a physical confrontation, it is going to feel like that person is trying to kill you when in all reality they probably just want to beat your ass and leave. So, are y'all a castle um, doctrine but, state? Well, yes. yes, we are. We are. Well, so you can, if you feel like your life is threatened, you can shoot the person. Uh, yes and no. It's it's uh, you know the way the courts look at it, and, and this this follows pretty much every state. Um, mm -hmm. Two two healthy adult males, um, the gun doesn't okay. come out. Um, right. You know that's the way they look at it. If it's an escalation got, of force. Right, so if if the person has, if it's two two healthy adult males versus what one, if it was, the gun was, can come out. What if it was the two adult males that that Dick Tape is sharing on his screen? That what? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the, Dick. the airsofters. I, I, guess, oh. I, guess, I guess I need to talk so this shows up on the damn screen and stuff, but could y'all imagine the conversation going on right now? Between them two? <laughs> hey, man! I like that drip in the vest you wear. Uh, I mean, dude, it's pretty tasty. Yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. Right McDonald's is, a, is one click away. Can this you make it? No. This is that rifle, helmet fitted? Better eat him another Snickers. <laughs> I think his head is just so big. When, it I, fit. when I see an overweight instructor, both of them, that's exactly what I see. If I see it, you know, and I'm not saying I'm, you know, a, a fucking picture of health. But yeah, you've done lost it, 30 pounds, though. Okay, yeah, I've lost a lot of weight. But if the dude in the McDonald's kit comes up to me and is going to try and teach me how to go urban prone really fast if I have to, I'm not going to fucking listen to him. Hey, he'll be able to roll nice and smooth. No, he'll be able to fall. No, he'll be able to fall. And when he falls, the earth shakes and it fucks my shot up. You guys do know that his... He does have gravy written on his name tag, right? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, I, when I was training with Max Ordnant, there was a guy there, and he was a sniper for like eight, eight or nine years in the military. And the one thing that he did, I guess, for a long time, is fucking yoga. And man, yeah. this this guy, he was getting in all these fucking contortionist shapes, like behind it, and, and the, you just couldn't do it, like. So yeah, a lot, a lot you gotta it, be in. A lot of it shape. is. Um, you you guys would be surprised. CrossFit nowadays, man. I mean, really, really, what it all comes down to is just is stretching everything out every day. You know, I mean, yoga. I mean, that's pretty much that isn't the same thing. But I mean, if you go to the gym and you get a good stretch every single day and you work out, it don't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. But if you just go and you keep your muscles fresh and you stretch every day, then when you go to actually run those drills where you have to drop in the prone or do something real quick, it's going to be a lot easier on your body. So um, it's, it's when you sit around all day and you don't do nothing and then all of a sudden you try and do it on a Saturday at a class, that's when you pull your muscle or something like that happens. So That's like good point, a actually. Of, Very good point. There's okay. probably a lot of people who go to a training session that happens. <laughs> See, most imagine. people can't roll like me. I wear a plate carrier the entire time and don't take that shit off. But I look at that as an extra exercise. I look at that like you're paranoid. <laughs> I'm a little bit paranoid. I don't trust the people I shoot with sometimes. Not not you guys, but some people I'm like, mm, not too you sure. Don't with. trust me. Here's some good comment from the... We haven't even touched the external, and the external's been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about Pat McNamara and... <laughs> Who was it? Oh my god, was it Brandon? It was like, bone saw! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was uh, the guy who won the grip, who I, whose name I still cannot pronounce. But Gerard Yankee! <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> bone saw's ready. It's, that's not uh, how you say his name, but, then, but that's how I'm saying his name. Well, we're, we're talking about keep, keeping fit, and Brandon said bullets run faster than track stars. For brief seconds. That's... Well, well, I mean, if you're a really good shot, you can hit a track star running really fast. Or, so, um, Not if you... Never mind. But he also, he did say, you know, the overweight guy needs to think more and work around their weight in a uh, in a defense issue. More awareness, better better down to cover skills. I, I think what he was Hulk trying to smash. say... Tell me if I'm wrong. 
I mean, I'll, the fat guy who's a, a phenomenal shot, he'll knock the wings off a of gnat's ass at 50 yards. I'll be yelling at him to cover me while I'm running. <laughs> um, More mass to hide behind. But yeah, dude, I'll get right behind him. Cover me, cover me, McDonald's. Let's go. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'd rather him take the shot anyway. Let him deal with the court system. Um, and then uh, Jill Adele past dear, I, I can't even say your name. Sorry, booze. Um, said she, I'm not trying to be a bitch, but I do wish the army would have uh, training like some of what she's seen in sites that we've all provided. Uh, but they only get three months to get ready, and it is some of the best training you can get. Now, we've touched on that before, saying uh, you know, why hasn't, if we all kind of uh, adopted to a quote-unquote new modern or new school style of shooting, why hasn't you know, the LEO, why hasn't FBI, why hasn't um, the Army, the Navy, the, why hasn't you know, any kind of armed services done it? And right. from what I understand, and I could be wrong, but it boils down to expenses. They can't change their regiment. It's too expensive. Although they can sit there and take money away from soldiers, and they can cut, you know, so, uh, if a uh, you know, soldier passes that's away. That's Yeah, that, that's all the well, big man in charge. Well, yep. But from what I understand, back. it's from what I understand, it's money. Um, it's politics. Politics rules, and well, then the money goes what the money. politics says. Hey, we're uh, too busy spending all of our money sending it to our. Uh, um, Haters, our enemies. Yeah. So priorities, true. guys. True. But, yeah. but it's also, but it's also on the individual. Uh, it's the individual's responsibility to make sure they're prepared <coughs> for their job. It's not the, it's not necessarily the responsibility of the institution they work for. That goes to a whole welfare mentality of well, since I'm enlisted in the army, they need to train me how to be a soldier. I mean, since when? Yeah. Or if we, I work for the police department, they train, the they train you for the objective that they want you to accomplish. They don't train you to. They train you for that objective. We want they you to do you this. We train you for this. Basically, what this what we were talking about the other day. They uh, they're okay with the minimum requirements. Don't I, and I don't expect. I would wish. That if there was a officer that was going to save me or my family, they would be the type that would not be okay with the minimum requirements, and they would train them. Uh, all. Thank you for that. You're, You're awesome, so good Danny. at that. Thank you. Right, right, and 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 when a majority of the individuals in an establishment are okay with the minimum requirements, then the establishment is seen as minimum requirement. But I mean, individuals in a in a police department could bring up the norm, and individuals in the military could bring up the norm, but they don't. Egos. Because, I mean, when you go to base camp, everybody's broken down. You're basically beat down to you're all nothing, and then they build you back up the way they want you. So that they would have to work it in, uh, you know, to but, make you a better soldier. You, you would be surprised how many – it's just like Solo Man. I mean, I can't tell you how many business cars I've passed out to um, – to, to police officers, and then we've and then we've had other police officers that have recommended us to other police officers, mm -hmm. and and they still even even a cop recommending to another cop saying, hey, I I took this guy's course, and you know you should give him a shot, go out, right. take one of his handgun one courses, and you'd be surprised on how much stuff we thought we knew, and um, they still. They just they they won't do it, and and the military yeah. guys are real. The military guys are real good about it. Um, they the mili we have a ton of military guys, whether they're active, maybe they were on leave and they came back and they were just bored and wanted something to do. That's cool. Or or they're or they're you know they're veterans, um, and they they come down and take our courses and do they do everything that we tell them to do, and they they end up picking off on it pretty quick. Right. And, uh, so it's it's been we've had a lot of success, but. LEOs, man, it's just uh, they show up at the gun shows and they walk by our booth and we try and give them a card and they say, "Oh no, dude, we're we're LEOs. We don't need that." Um, we and we even had, have, uh, we have security guards that have yeah. already told us. They, the, the <laughs> I, I know how to joke. use my taser. Don't worry about no, it. No, no, I know no. how my pepper spray operates. There's there's a, there's a company in town called um, Titan Security and it, it's basically. They're like police officers, but they're security guards. They're in uniforms. They kind of look like police, but and they're in like, like semi police cars. So wait, don't, do they go around the neighborhoods locally? Like do some uh, not not neighborhoods, but it may be like a district or something. And there like, was a like, local you neighborhood. You stop. You can just laugh at them. Well, they get <laughs> apparently they, can, they get they get paid like twelve bucks an hour, and they're they're you know above like a. a Cert 
uh, what a CERTA's, you know, security guard or whatnot, and they are armed. You know, they got regular police belts on and everything else. Um, well, we we saw a couple of the guys up at the local range where we teach our courses at and we tried to give them cards and they told us that they're LEOs and we asked them what department they worked with and uh, they told us they work with Titan Security and we were like, oh, you guys are security guards. Yeah, you're not LEOs. <laughs> and actually, Solo has experience with people claiming to be law enforcement of some sort and they're actually not. Well, I, I mean, I don't yeah. care if, whether, whether they are or they aren't, it doesn't really matter to me, but I mean, to 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 believe that you are at a, a higher level than others. It's ridiculous. You know. We had, out at the HCTV range, um, one of our, our good buddies, Glock Holiday, had a relative who was a state trooper come out. And uh, he said, you know, I'm only coming out because I want to prep for my quals. And we were like, well, what are, what do you, how do you qual? What do you have to do? And he had no idea, so we had to look it up for him. And so we looked it up, and we ran him through the test with a shot timer. First off, he didn't know what the fuck a shot timer was. Wow. I mean, that threw him way off. And so, you know, we you know, we said, well, we're going <laughs> to run through this with you, and we'll go through all your quals. And I'll be damned if with his three fifty, what was he shooting? Do you remember, Spiro, were you out there? Is he a state trooper? Yeah. three fifty seven SIG. Yeah, he was shooting three fifty seven yeah. SIG. And from 25 yards up to 5 yards, he was lucky to catch inside the 8s on a full silhouette. Um, I mean, and it was just blind and just teacupping and just had we didn't follow through with fundamentals. And we let him run his qual. He fucked up. We let him run his qual again. And <clears throat> I'm no instructor, but I, at one point I felt obligated to step in and said, maybe, why don't you try this? Let's see how this works for you, da da da, -da. Here I am. I don't even know the guy. I just met him, and I'm just trying to give him friendly tips. And he was polite. Don't get me yes. wrong. I'm not saying he was an asshole. He was very polite about it. But uh, <clears throat> kind of politely shrugged it off. You know, I know what I'm doing, and and then decided to settle for less. He was like, I only got to shoot a you know an 87, so whatever. And I'm like, dude, if if somebody's holding a gun to my head at the side of the road, and you have to break a shot, fucking 87. I want you to be able to take that dude out in the dome. Fuck a hundred. Like, you better be shooting a hundred and one. No That's shit. never gonna happen. Like, why are you settling? You more so than me, and I'm just an average citizen, but you more so than me have to rely on that gun. Right. You have to but rely a lot of on them your accuracy, don't rely and you a don't lot care. Of them don't train enough. The it's only true. time they pull out their guns, I guarantee you, is when it comes time to qualifying, and that's it. A lot of cops aren't gun people. That's the scary so, part. Uh, and like, I'm, lucky enough, I'm, I'm also lucky enough to have LEO friends who are very open-minded, who come out to training classes, who want to learn. Um, so I might have, you know, that might be rare, but I, I have friends that are like that. I have multiple friends that are like that, that have attended solo classes. And that have, you know, I said, what's your opinion? This is, you know, later on, a few days later, and we've talked. And I've said, you know, what's your opinion? They're like, you know, whether or not... That's what the academy teaches us. It's tools for the toolbox. We've taken things that we can use, and we'll learn from there. So when, that's why I kind of step in when people cover all the bases and say all LEOs. Well, I understand that 99% of the LEOs you've dealt with have that mindset, have that attitude, yeah. but there are exceptions and, always. And, and I, might and I don't have anything. And I don't have any, you know, I don't have anything negative to say about police officer. I mean, I, I, my father is uh, uh, just retired about a year ago, and he was in, he was on the force for over thirty years, and he 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 has not taken one of my courses. So I mean, it's you know, it's <laughs> some him. some some old guys they just they don't care, you know. They, well, it's, I've it's, asked my dad before, and he's just like ah, he's like you know. I'm not gonna waste your time with you know trying to teach. He always says teach an old. You gotta understand tricks, it's not a waste you know? of time. You know, like even you know, Tim and I and a couple other people watched an old FBI training video from the 70s. It was from what 77, 78. That had more positive information in that video than most of the modern stuff you're seeing average YouTubers kick out every day. And that's the sad thing is people are going to YouTube going. Well, how do I learn to shoot without spending 
150 bucks on a class. These are the same people that'll spend $600 on a really awesome gun, and they'll spend $200 on some really cool ammo, and then they'll spend $10 on a holster, and they they go, well, I don't. I, that's all I need. It's, listen, you have a tool, but you don't know how to use it yet. You know, you might know how to pull the trigger. You might know how to stand at an indoor range and hit, you know, inside the nines. Good for you. That's great. But do you know when to pull that tool out? Do you know when to use it? Do you know <laughs> if you're in XYZ position or scenario how to do it? No, you don't, and you're not willing to learn. That's sad. Hey, uh, I know I don't know how late this goes, but can I change subject and ask a quick question? We've actually we've hit <laughs> our time limit technically, but we'll go. I mean, I don't give a shit if anybody wants to bow out, bow out. But uh, I'm gonna I'll hang out. I'll stick around. Actually, I just had a quick question actually for uh, Spiro, since you guys are with uh, the um, ammunition manufacturing and everything, and with this whole new uh, lead smelter going out of business, I just kind of wanted to see what your guys' thoughts were and what you guys kind of foresee coming out. Honestly, get it from somewhere else. Um, well, that's kind of the thing. See, most lead that's used is recycled. Um, this lead smelter, basically, what they do is they take the raw ore and refine it down. Um, there's plenty of recyclers out there, um, whether it be from batteries or whatever. There's, it's not going to hurt the um, the industry much. I mean, I was doing research on this because I was getting worried for a little bit, um, you know, with ordering everything. But um, it turns out it's not that big of a deal because not only not only do we have plenty of recyclers, but um, they're talking about opening up a new one in Texas, I believe. The real big state of the art uh, hey, refinery. Right. <laughs> so, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't there, think we'll see a change in much of anything. You don't think the the it'll cause a big ammo spike in price again or anything like that? Or it shouldn't. I mean, right now the biggest thing that's killing us is brass price. Brass, uh, especially on forty five, it went through the roof. The brass spot price, mm. and now everybody wants like way too much. It adds. 30, about thirty dollars to a case of my ammo, to just the price of a. Uh, do you uh, do you guys do brass exchanges? That's what we do with our guy. Um, we do sometimes. I don't trust a lot of brass from some people, but if it's coming from a range or you know somebody I know shot it, because I only reload once fired brass till till our brass machine gets in. It's it's on order. It's probably still about ten months out, but um, we'll be doing brand new custom made brass um soon enough. And so, people. To can I real, get real brass quick on, my face on it? No. <laughs> you can wipe your face on his brass. Um, yeah, there you go. That works too. Works a lot of people ask. Well, and for Spear, real quick, a lot of people ask. Well, why don't you have 45 in this second? Spear has got plenty of 45, plenty of it, but it's nothing that he would want to sell as an as an end product to <clears throat> a consumer. Right. You know, he doesn't know how many times it's been fired. Uh, he doesn't know. It, it, it's not a real. That might not be a reliable product. It's something right. that that he would. You know, I'll I'll take it and test fire it in my gun. I don't care. But, Pretty much what you did. And, well, yeah, that's what I mean. I I have one gun that I've only ran Spiro's ammo through. Period. Aside from testing out uh, defensive rounds, uh, I've only used Spiro's ammo. And, Spiro, are you the uh, owner of Minute Man? Yes, I am. I am. You are okay. Yep. I'm the yeah, professional um, brass kicker. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll call. We'll give you that title. I like that title. Um, but, you know, it, it's there. But if, if you want brass, you know, if Spiro, if someone's asking for 45 and the price of that brass has gone up, Spiro's the kind of guy who's not going to go, okay, I'll give you 45 but I'm going to jump up 50 bucks on my, on my price. So yeah, he'd I'm rather not that. sell it than... Give it to somebody at a higher income. I mean, that's why he sells to an ammo as inexpensive as he does. He'd rather yeah, but that, that's not. to an extent. If the market is that high, yes, in you know a month, I'm gonna have to reach at that point and say, hey, I gotta do it. But you know, if it's these short term spikes, especially since we have brass deals going on with the state of North Carolina right now, um, there's no reason for me to to be fluctuating prices so fast like that. It's not. Not worth it, and I mean, I, I had people whining over three dollars of shipping that I have no control over. 
and that was rather interesting to talk about. I mean, I'm not, the person was very polite, you know, not they were just curious, and I was like, well, that's kind of out of my hands. Um, but I haven't changed any of my prices. They've stayed at what they've stayed at. Um, you know, I'm trying not to to play people. I don't think that's fair because I want people <laughs> to get out and shoot and to, and to have a good time and to learn and to train well, and, and all and that. And people also have to under understand what it is. Like Brandon uh, in the external said to check out the GoFundMe for gun torture tests and that he would never trust range brass. If you're carrying range brass, you're a moron. I'm not calling you a moron, Brandon. I, you tune in I all do the time. That. I definitely appreciate I do that. it. Well, you're a moron, Spiro, but it's your yes. own brass. It, it's your, you've you've actually compiled that that round together. Right. So, and, so you trust it. Um, but for Joe Schmo like me, who didn't have, you know, I don't have anything. I'm not going to carry range brass. I, he's right. Um, but I personally fired his once fired brass. I've probably got. I don't. What do you guess, Spiro? Through my just my M&P 45. Uh, this is close to 2,500 2000. rounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. And I haven't had any problems yet. I might. We'll see. But I haven't yet. But I'm not going to trust my life to range brass. I will train with it because if it gives me a malfunction, hell yeah, that's a teaching moment. I get to learn how to clear a real malfunction without setting it up, and I get to learn how to do it on the fly. That's important. Well, I mean, that that's kind of a side thing, but... I mean, from the guys that, that I've talked to, uh, I, I think one of the guys that uh, sent me a review back, he works with Miami-Dade SWAT team or does something, trains with them at least, and he shot 1,400 rounds of my stuff at one of their classes, zero malfunctions, and just yeah. loved it. And, and I mean, I, what do I say to that? It, it is once fired brass, but that means nothing because all the functional components – are well, not that the brass isn't functional, but you know you need a primer, obviously, and you need gunpowder. I mean, yes, you can reload a once-fired bullet, but whoever does that type of shit should be bashed upside the head. Um, I did do it once just to see what would happen. It was interesting, um, but the point being is your brass, once-fired brass, it doesn't matter. Once the brass is is annealed and and the way it's made, it's meant to be fired multiple times before. That's and why it's it, brass, not steel. Even steel, you can reload steel. I mean, it's horrible on your dies, but you can do it. So, you know, all these people out there talking about, oh, I won't shoot this, I won't shoot that. The point is, if you don't know what my ammo is, you're not good. You don't want it anyway. I mean, if you want to go out and have a good time and and not spend a lot of money, that's what you're looking for is my stuff. You know, I'm not trying to be something I'm not. At least right now. Eventually, we'll get into defensive rounds. I mean, but we got to have which, a brand new brass. And, will you do? Uh, uh, your Eventually, we're we're working on that. I'm um after shot show. I'm gonna we're going to shot show. You know, talk to some uh, equipment guys and things like that. Um, we're gonna do what we can do. Um, we're taking it step by step. That's pretty much how it is right now. I mean, getting two two three stuff is just insane at the moment. Um, but that is my next step is two two three, and I'm working on it. I'm already getting getting a hold of the brass, you know, uh, finding finding the uh, powder, and trying to find projectiles. But we're getting there slowly. But, well, guys, um, yeah. we've actually we got to wrap up. We're we're pushing our time for the week. I mean, we go for another two hours, but that just means really drunk, belligerent, more belligerent <laughs> ranting than you've already seen. <laughs> Uh, that is plus, true. uh, plus Tim's getting a hell of a rug burn on his ass. No, dude, Candy dude and you, missed, you missed my post up higher. Yeah. No, yeah, you missed my post up higher, dude. I did so many sit ups yesterday. I, I literally have a rug burn on my ass. That is horrible. What is rug raw. What is that? Tim's the kind of guy that does sit ups while asking. he's shooting at steel. You did not prepare for dude, proper I padding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, I was, I was just asking if you guys, I was just asking if you guys wanted to see it or not. Nah, I'm oh, good yeah. personally. Wait till, wait, wait, thanks. Wait till Solo leaves. <laughs> wait till I, yeah, wait till I leave. Um, hey, one one thing I was gonna share with you guys before we all bounce here, since, since everybody in this room is you know like-minded people, um, we have. Uh, first off, if you guys don't follow us already, Frontline Defense on Facebook. I'm gonna type it yeah. in. It's 
Three three words, frontline defense. You can search us and find us on there. We just like Solo, we post a lot of good information with what's going on in the gun world. So obviously, I know you guys aren't local. Probably won't be attending any of our classes anytime soon. But um, you know, if uh, if you guys want to follow us, just see pictures and updates and stuff going on with our courses. It might be interesting. Soon. And we got a bunch of videos we're going to be posting up here soon. Um, and uh, I did want to let you know our two sponsors are Gear Zone Tactical which I mentioned already before. Um, if you guys need anything regarding gear, um, reach out to me and I'll see whatever kind of a discounts or, or anything I can get you guys. Um, a lot of our discounts are for people that come and uh, take our courses. We get a discount card that we get to pass out to them. Uh, but if there's something that you guys are eyeing and you want, let me know and I'll see if I can get you a good deal on it, optic or something like that. And then um, our holster sponsor some of you guys might follow him on Instagram if you guys have it. I JC do. Custom, I do. JC, <laughs> JC Custom Kydex is our holster sponsor. So um, we just got another shipment of holsters in from him today, and uh, he does amazing work. So And yeah, he has been, probably the, the best prices that we have seen in a long time for holsters. We, uh, we, we used to use Lion Defense, which I don't know if you guys have heard of them or not. Um, we were with them for the last year. They were our holster sponsor, and now now it's JC starting November one. So, awesome. I actually have been checking out JC for a while on Instagram, um, try and comment as as much as I can and hang out with them. They do. I they're they're here. They, I mean, if you want to check it out for yourself, maybe. Hey, is it? Maybe, is it can you see that? Frontline Defense you USA. I'll I'll send you, I'll put the link on my uh my Facebook. There's two. There's one here in North Carolina. It's not it. Um, there was a funny story early on. Um, huh. Remember, I first started talking to Stephen. He posted something on uh, on our solo page about their company, and I thought it was the guys in North Carolina. And I was kind of I was trying to be nice about it, but I was like, dude, are you are you seriously just plug your freaking stuff stuff on our our page? Um, but uh, it wasn't until a little bit later that I realized it was not. Um, but I'll I'll share their um, page real quick on my Facebook so everybody can share theirs. Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, if if uh, yeah, if you guys ever have any questions or anything like that, in the meantime, in between these these uh, these sessions, uh, let us know, and we you know help anybody out we can. So. Good deal, man. We'll uh, we'll put you on the uh, we got an opcom Facebook that we do that we kind of uh, use to share ideas uh, for people that have joined in or people that may be joining in. So uh, we'll put you guys on that. Just make sure you add high capacity TV, um, guys. We we got to wrap up. We're past time. We do appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We always laugh <laughs> super hard, and uh, this is probably the most informative. Condensed episode Definitely. of Opcom you've caught, you've caught. So um, <laughs> hopefully we'll bring uh, that same information on into uh, next week, where we'll be kind of expanding on IFAX. Um, and like we said, we're kind of going to start building our own quote unquote bug out bag. I know everybody's got different definitions, but we'll get that nailed down for you. Um, uh, Dick, do you want to take us out, drunky? Yeah. <laughs> you just watched. You have just watched a song of boners, <laughs> and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Hey, Bye, we appreciate boners. the invite. Bye. Later, guys. See you guys. Boners. <laughs>